Well, uh, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you so very much for coming on. Um, uh, uh, please uh, introduce yourself, shout out your, your channel, let everybody know what you're all about, because there's probably a bunch of people here who aren't familiar with you, uh, even though I'm sure some are. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, Absolutely. I would say I'm a commentary YouTuber. I would say I fall into like that general um, sphere. I am a leftist, so I definitely like dabble my toe in talking about like leftist topics, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. consider myself like a leftist political creator necessarily. Okay. Um, especially recently, I've been trying to like shift back my content more towards like focusing on comedy and music and stuff like that, because I feel like that's really where I shine as a creator, not as much like giving super in-depth political takes because I'm, I'm honestly not like incredibly educated about like leftist theory and whatnot, but um, that's fair. A lot of people yeah. aren't. It, it's still, uh, especially, I don't know, especially in the uh, English speaking world, the leftist theory is not the, is not a, commonly taught it's not something that people like naturally come into contact with most of the time so that makes sense um i wish awesome. it was i wish that in history class you'd get a more uh, honest representation of leftist theory but obviously that's not gonna happen so me too i feel like uh i feel like american at least american history classes can't even handle like a basic basic truth about uh about about history about our own history let alone like being able to introduce then, people to other like like thought like political lines of thought yeah and then donald trump is like oh it's too far woke you know we need to make it even more dishonest so. yeah we need to be yeah, the we, only we thing it. that you actually learn is uh you just every history class is just another retelling of of like george washington chopping down the cherry tree and then being like oh mm -hmm. mommy i'm sorry i lied that sort of and thing. And then the first Thanksgiving dinner where they're all hugging each other. That's, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's like, ooh, the yeah. turkey's great this year, isn't it? And everybody just <laughs> just does a little song. Yeah, that's the that's all you're gonna get. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I I am very happy that uh, that uh, comrade Joe Biden uh, uh, eliminated the possibility of the yeah. 1776 project ever <laughs> ever coming around. <laughs> to be fair, I think basically comrade anybody would have been able to pull off that one. Uh, that was a pretty uh, Donald Trump's uh, history rewriting project was uh, was ridiculous. Um, yeah. yeah. Well. Anyway. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for shouting yourself out and uh, and you know in introducing yourself to everybody. Um, so what you had initially wanted to at least that we talked about uh, prior was was talking about sort of the bloody state of the online left, and that is something mm -hmm. that I have talked about. <laughs> A lot recently, but a lot generally. Uh, I've been in in the much more explicitly political spaces um, since I basically started my channel. When I first started my channel, my channel was like almost exclusively politics. I did debates. Um, I was a debate, uh, a debate sis, a debate bro streamer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, was like my jam. And then uh, over time, I was like, I'm kind of done with this. Uh, uh, I'm done with the debate stuff. I felt like the debate, the actual debate content was getting really toxic as far as like how they're set up and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And and especially so especially in like the Twitch poll space a yes. couple years ago, I feel like it was even more toxic. Yeah, it got it started with there was it was interesting because there are some um, I I feel like there are trends that happened within the Twitch poll space that are reflected at the like like lefty politics writ large. Like I think that there's a lot mm -hmm. of parallels there, um, where there started with a lot of people with uh, with generally uh, amicable relations and the ability to to sit down and have conversations about important uh, important talk to topics, and then it just over time kept giving in to the like sort of lowest drama urges. Um, not that there wasn't always some level of drama. Obviously, there was like, I mean, I even was like, you know, I was excited to, to bring spice. I would get pretty intense in the debates, although I tried to keep it to the debate and not carry it beyond and like hate people. You know, I was just like, I'm going to be yeah. intense in this debate. I'm not going to mince words. But anyway, yeah, the Twitch poll is like I have... actually gone. Like there's nothing left of it. it even, Twitch doesn't even have a politics uh, seg section anymore which is wild. I mean, I guess I, it might actually, I thought, I'm pretty sure they rolled it into just chat, uh, just chatting, which is weird. Why, but. why do you, why do you think that is? Was Twitch like cracking down on having like spicy conversations or things like that? Or 
Yeah, for sure. Um, there was a lot of stuff you used to be able to talk about and do on Twitch that they've actually made like explicit rulings on. Um, like, I mean, one of them is just like, uh, like their slur policy, which seems fairly uh, like, oh, what? Like, like you can't even refer to slurs in like a like a, a analytical sense. An educational. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, mm-hmm. I, I would, you know, I couldn't do a segment talking about like the F slur or the T slur and its historical usage, even as a trans person and a gay person. Like, mm-hmm. um, so that was one thing, and but of course- Didn't Hassan get temporarily banned for saying cracker or something? Yes, that, that also happened. That was, um, we yeah. had a, I had a funny stream when that happened. Um, that, was, that was after I had already switched over to YouTube because I'm a YouTube streamer now. Um, mm-hmm. But, but uh, uh, I started on Twitch and uh, yeah. And the, the other thing too was another one that started happening was this one actually was more impactful than the slur policy because obviously, you know, talking about slurs in the analytical context is pretty niche. It's not gonna happen all that often, even though it kind of sucks to not be able to talk about it, frankly, to have to dance around it. But what really hurt it was um, they made a ruling that, that you can't watch uh, footage that contains uh, hateful content or uh, hate symbols or hate language, uh, even to even to oppose it, which basically mm. means, um, I mean, you 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 couldn't show you couldn't talk about parts of January sixth, for example, without risk of your channel. Uh, so it had this freezing effect of basically, okay, so we can't. Um, an example of this would be, you know, I don't know if you've heard about. I'm going to talk about this later in the show. If I don't know if you heard about Ron DeSantis's campaign and that that. Uh, uh, they ran an ad that had a, a black sun in it, and um, yeah, and you can't play that to talk about it on on Twitch without running a genuine risk of your channel being hit. So it just had this freezing effect. Over time, there were more and more changes that just seemed to be pushing people away from politics as a platform. I mean, they explicitly said, I don't remember who it was. I couldn't give you an exact quote, but one of their um, one of their sort of like a community leadership was just like, yeah, we want we want Twitch to focus on gaming um, more than mm-hmm. other stuff. And so that just kind of for a lot of people was like, okay, this is clearly not going to be there's not going to be any like, us. yeah, it's hostility to that. And, you know, mm-hmm. the actual politics space itself, the people who were active in the politics tag, um, the people who were sort of networking in, you know, in that sort of space, it got super bloody like so bloody it's hard to even like i mean there are comparisons to now um but i i feel like it was just so much worse it got so bad um Mm -hmm. and uh and yeah and then it and then so nobody was working with each other the content was drying up it was becoming increasingly insular um and uh there was just so much bad blood that the, the 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 tag started to die and people were just doing other things um, and you know, for something, my, so- yeah, go ahead, please. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So something that I've noticed that is, is kind of interesting is as I watch political creators over the years, it does feel like there's always this like inevitable, something goes wrong and the bridge gets burned between this mm. creator and that creator and some massive thing blows up. And I, I feel like I haven't noticed that happen as much in like the commentary community, uh-huh. which I, I consider myself more on like the commentary side. Like I would consider myself, like I'm really good friends with like Nick is not green. I don't know if you've heard of him before. I'm loosely um, familiar to Nick is not, uh, for, for Nick is not green or with, with Nick is not green. Yeah. Yeah. Like Nick is not green. Uh, Ethan is online. Like these are more like commentary um, type people, but we are leftists as well. But I've just noticed that I, I just feel like, um, there hasn't been as much drama and infighting like obviously an occasional drama will pop up or you know we'll talk about oh this person had like a bad take or something but i feel like why do you think it is that the political space is so i mean maybe it is just the nature of politics that makes it so much more rife with like people burning bridges and 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 feeling like they have to attack each other and i and i just to be clear, coming into this conversation, I don't want to act like I'm up on some high horse. I definitely have engaged in the infighting. I, I try to engage in a way that I'm like, okay, maybe I can come at this from like a constructive angle, but you know, if I, I don't always hit the mark with that necessarily. So sure. And just for the record, I'm not like super interested in like hashing out any specific 
uh, 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 you know, dramas or or beefs or anything like that. I'm more interested in like, and I, maybe maybe you're you're in a different direction. That's fine. We can work that out. But at least for me, I'm more interested in having just a general discussion about the space and the trends in the space. And and uh, at least mm-hmm. that's for me. But um, so why do I think that that the po- politics space struggles with this so much? I mean, there's a couple of there's a couple of reasons. I I think uh, first off, I think that like. Politics generally uh, uh, has this issue of uh, intrinsically st- people perceiving it as more important than it is, or not just more important than it is, but important in a different way is a better way that I should say it. Um, people mm-hmm. think that like every single action that's taken in a political space is like immediately impacting the future of the world to a good or or bad place, and. As a result, this leads to like, um, there's so many downstream effects of this. I mean, some people lean into that really, really hard. There are creators who um, basically sell themselves as uh, the avatar of a revolution. Um, Like, and I mean that, like there are people who will explicitly say like, I'm out here, you know, we're challenging the system as it is and we're bringing, I mean, you see this on, on the right, but you also see this on the left with people who, um, basically sell themselves as like, I am a political movement. I am going to bring you the future that will make you feel happy. And uh, this sort mm. of messianic quality um, is one. Kind of like down- an, setting yourself up as an ideologue. And like, if people don't step in line with exactly what you're saying, then they're, you know, an enemy to your movement or something. Yeah, I, I think that's part of it. Um, that's like definitely a, 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 a yeah, that's exactly one of the things. I think that's that, that it's like that where it's like there's this this perception that like um, because politics is is talking about something important. Politics is important. We can all acknowledge that politics is incredibly important. It affects a huge yeah. part of our lives. I mean, it is arguably everything in our lives is political in one way or another. Um, and so the space has that quality and it, it does le- lean itself to people taking themselves as like a creator in a space as like a youtuber or even worse like as like a a tweet tweeter or a poster the people thinking that like no i what i am doing is an intrinsic part of the of the of the communist future or the whatever future the socialist future or whatever i think um yeah and i think i i think that can sometimes be a backlash to um how insufferable like apolitical people can be where they're like oh why does everything need to be so political and you're like no things are political like politics are important but then i i agree you can go too far in the other direction where you can allow your ego to start making you feel like you know that you are the next you know Karl marx or the next you know mlk or something when you're really just a you know you only have an audience of obviously being a YouTuber and being able to speak to like thousands of people is a pretty cool thing, but you yeah. still have to also keep that in perspective that like, you're not going to be changing the world. Like this has to be like an, an incremental thing, you know, it has, you're, you're a part, you can be a part of something bigger, um, without like, you know, you know, without, without it's, it's all about completely ego, misrepresenting like. it. Yeah, there is a huge ego effect, but I mean, I think also like the internet generally makes it hard for people to like grasp like what does having a thousand followers mean? What does having a thousand live viewers mean? You know, what do I, like? It's hard to gauge these things. It's really hard. So a lot of people kind of like, I think just wing it, you know. And I think what that can lead to is like on a large scale, it can lead to like just totally uh, unreasonable, uh, um, like uh, what's the right word? Projections or, or, or yeah, projections of harm. Like people like saying, oh, well you said this thing wrong and that's bad politics in my mind, which means because you're this size, and you have this much followers or whatever, that means you did a bad thing and you're hurting the the, ma- the future that I'm hoping for. Where in reality, I, I think it's much more likely to be like, um, most of the things that people do is like not to that scale. And that there are of course mm-hmm. specific examples, but I feel like people should take more time to actually like hammer out what harm is being alleged here. Because a lot of it is just like sort of empty 
this person did that thing. And, and, you know, people talk about this with, like, you know, call-out culture in the past and then cancel culture and that gets weaponized by people who actually do have a huge impact to completely wash their hands of any sort of responsibility. But I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that like, there's a confounding effect by this all being online politics. It's hard to know exactly how much of an impact is being had by anybody. Which, you know, my answer to that is of course, like be more, you know, I, I urge people constantly to be more, you know, serious and uh, uh, and and specific when they're making a, a claim or when they're um, you know uh, you know saying somebody you know X person did this okay what what effect did that actually have show that you know if you're gonna take the time to go after somebody and I think that w you know to tie this back to what you were saying about like maybe the commentary community and I think this is true about other communities too where the drama seems so different in nature or it seems so much like less intense. I think part of that is because there is no presumption that like, oh, okay, so uh, this person is fighting with that person. The, oh, you're an idiot. You're an asshole. You called me this. You offended my partner or whatever. And that's that. It is what it is. Whereas in, in politics spaces, it all gets laundered into some sort of larger political issue. Somebody can't just be an asshole. Somebody can't just be an idiot. Somebody can't have just misspoke. It has to be tied to some greater thing. This person uh, said this thing and has prevented us from getting communism and workers are going to continue to be exploited because of this. And it's like, okay, is that really true? Or, or do you just think this person's a stupid asshole? And so when talking about like all of this, it's like, I find it really important to like be, be specific when we're, when we're bringing allegations against somebody else or whatever, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or extrapolating like someone did a bad action, so therefore they're a bad person. Like, you, you can have someone who has done a bad thing and you can criticize them for the bad thing without needing to extrapolate that out, that they're like a completely harmful uh, force in the space or that they need to be like excommunicated from the space. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like I see a lot of people on like the more debate bro side of things talking about how like, we shouldn't be so quick to like, you know, gatekeep leftism and be like, oh, we need to excommunicate people from the left. But then I do see them then sometimes saying like, oh, we actually do need to like excommunicate these people because these people are making like um, shitty accusations towards us. So then therefore they need to be excommunicated from the left. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's like, yeah, maybe. I think I definitely have felt like I'm someone who feels kind of caught in the middle on things, but then no one likes a fence sitter. No one likes someone who's like saying, oh, both sides, you know, like I totally understand that when I say like there are toxic behaviors on both sides, that that is like a red flag to especially people in leftist spaces, because that comes across so much like the centrists that are like, oh, the left and the right are both equally bad or something. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's something that I myself have like, I always try, you know, I'm always worried about in, in when I, whenever I do decide to, to commentate on, uh, um, you know, a drama or, or, you know, involve my opinion on some, uh, something that doesn't directly affect me or that only affects me in a tangential way. I always feel like, um, yeah, I, I, I always feel like I want to be able to like urge people to, 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 to have to take caution or whatever without minimizing like stuff that really has hurt, like where people have been hurt, but it is complicated by like, I don't know. It is complicated by all that we've been talking about so far. And um, how, how much do you think someone has a responsibility if like someone in their in group does something harmful or does something bad in some way? How much do you think that like you have a responsibility to like call that out and criticize it? Because that's something that I've been running into where I'm like, is it even worth it for me to be giving all my takes on all this leftist info? Like it, it is me even giving like voicing my opinions on Twitter about this? Is this even having any sort of positive impact or any sort of like benefit towards the cause? Um, because I, I see I see both sides of it where like if you just allow bad behavior to fester in your community and you never like call out, hey, 
you need to stop doing X, Y, Z, then that can foster ways that people can be getting hurt in the community. But then if you call it out too much, then it, it descends into this, you know, thing where we're weakening our own movement because we're constantly fighting each other. Whereas I feel like a lot of times more strong political movements are ones where people aren't always like at each other's throats, you know? Yeah. Uh, so with regard to like how much responsibility do people have to call one another out? I mean, I, I think that, uh, viewers, um, I, I know that my chat's probably going to get really mad at me, but, um, they can suck it. Uh, frankly, uh, viewers have a totally parasocial relationship with every single person in all of these spaces and they want mm -hmm. blood all the time. So they want everyone who has ever even so much as mentioned somebody else uh, or talked to them or had a conversation with them to call out everyone all the time because they're always looking for more drama. And they always believe that like, if you've sat down and talked to somebody on one occasion that you uh, have made a, you're like, you're ba basically your family now is what they is from their perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I think that most like chatters are completely deranged with regard to like <laughs> this conversation about um about like uh you know responsibility to call out other people. And that's especially that goes especially true not even just chatters. Twitter posters are insane when it comes to so-called accountability. And I mean, mm -hmm. I think that like I think that the responsibility to like call out your own becomes higher like when when you're like uh when you're engaging when you engage more in the uh in like the the fight you know um i don't know like uh uh i i often you know I, like if, I, if if the only thing you're ever doing all day is sitting on twitter and calling people out but you're not really doing anything uh that is actually like advancing the leftist cause you know yeah and your entire day is just being consumed by calling people out then that might but it's like how do we even ad advance the leftist cause as like because that's something that i fall into where i'm like what even is my place in the world as a commentary youtuber like my yeah. job is to my job is to criticize people i mean that's what being a commentary youtuber is it's like yeah. find something bad someone does and criticize it and that's like all that i do like for a, a living yeah. yeah yeah i mean i don't know like i at least for the way that I talk about it, I'm always like my chat can even tell you I'm super upfront with the fact that like at most I'll call myself an edutainer. Uh, I usually call myself an entertainer. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. I try to be pretty clear about that. I'm a very politically opinionated person. Um, most of my content is very political in nature. Um, but like at least for me, I am I try to be very aware of my role as a YouTuber that like at the end of the day, like that's what I have and that's the way that I can impact the world, but it's limited. Um, you know, I am never, I will never be in a position to like make policy. That is not like, I mean, maybe if mm -hmm. I like was super passionate about that and I spent my life like trying to run for office or something, it's possible. But like, I don't have that type of background. I came from nowhere, uh, middle of nowhere, super rural background. Uh, you know, uh, and, and then I managed to start a YouTube channel where, uh, people thought I was funny and interesting and had, you know, fun, you know, you know, compelling things to say about political topics. So I don't know. That's like, that's, I try to keep that in scope and just go, okay, that's what my role is, is I, I can prompt people to think harder about a topic. I can hopefully maybe inspire them to have conversations with their friends about those topics. Um, but like, mm -hmm. I can't influence directly, like what policies get made or whatever. Um, I can do some really I think cool, the, yeah. but yeah. So it's like, I don't know. I think that like keeping that in scope is really important, but yeah, it's hard. It's a hard question. I think I think primarily, yeah, we're just entertainers. Our our basic job is to like sit down, talk on camera, entertain people, and then make money from that engagement. I mean, that's the main thing. Hopefully, you know, the 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 benefit on top of that is that we can like in some way influence the way people think in in some way, you know, whether that's just ten people get influenced or maybe that's a couple yeah. thousand people get influenced. Um, I, I do think we have the ability to make a difference on some scale, but not on the scale that like, yeah, you were saying that people's egos can, it can get inflated to the point where they think that they're the, 
they're the leaders of the revolution. Yeah, and I mean, I think I do think that like sometimes there can be a huge effect. Like, I mean, I don't think that any individual person in like the uh, the like to to draw from the an example on the right, like the alt right pipeline. I don't think any of those people. I mean, hell, uh, T J Kirk did a video. Uh, I think it was called like how I you know accidentally created the anti SJW genre. And I really like mm -hmm. that video. Um, it's a video where he, he talks about like what his headspace was when he was making that content and how like at the time it was like his perception of content making was just completely different than his perception now. That it was like a, a joke space where he could like play a character on the internet and do these things and that he was never thinking about like what types of downstream effects that would have and you know how he's changed his perspective on that but I, I like that video because i i think that like a lot of people i don't think that even the people who do think about that a lot can actually meaningfully predict exactly what their uh, impact is going to be you never know mm -hmm. like exactly when you're going to be a part of a trend or something that goes viral I think it's good to keep it in mind, but you can never really know that stuff. I mean, hell, sometimes you'll be sitting at, at home, you know, do, being lazy or whatever. You're like, ah, I don't want to stream today. And then you find, you get a notification. One of your old videos is blowing up for some reason because some completely yeah. unpredictable thing happened. And it's like, um, so like that kind of thing, you know, complicates stuff. And I don't know. I do think that like, you know, I'm not trying to say that like, I don't think that online content creation is impactful. I definitely think it is. And I want to see more people, um, more like lefty creators making stuff because like, oh God, the, recently there's been this uh, on YouTube shorts, there's been this trend of um, like Ben Shapiro and Michael Knowles, but specifically Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire people um, like, reacting to uh with almost no additional commentary just like comedy specials and then he'll be like hmm. yeah you know ha, it's really true that's why wokeness is bad and and it'll be like a youtube short of just like basically stolen content with like uh uh, uh you know ben shapiro sitting there nodding and smiling is that even like can, is that even really transformative like yeah i mean good question uh the shorts aren't police as much it seems but uh but yeah. even still like like I would love it if there was, you know, if people would land on like a lefty leaning person more, you know, than instead of somebody who's going to slowly work them into a position of being like anti woke. But these yeah. things are really that's, hard to predict. And that's some that's yeah. something that I have thought about with my channel from the get go is kind of the idea of trying to make videos that touch on, you know, kind of what is like a trending topic or like a more. Um, something people are talking about in the news and then kind of like subtly like place those like leftist ideas in there yeah. um, with the hopes that you can bring kind of a wider audience to think about leftist ideas without like because if you just put out a like a, a blatantly leftist video that's obviously going to appeal to leftist people but sometimes I think it's good to make videos that might appeal more towards the center so that yeah. you can like subtly implant those ideas. Um, and I think that, I think right-wing people understand this a lot better than left-wing people a lot of times. I think that Ben Shapiro, um, the left is way better at like making movies and like making good entertainment than the right. But I feel like the yeah. right is sometimes better at understanding the way that uh, with like internet culture, like that you should be trying to appeal towards like bringing people over to your side not always just like having the most insular community where you just kind of circle jerk about topics you already all agree on you know yeah i mean i think that the right has a bit of an advantage in that like they can play to a lot of i mean a lot of what they do is just playing to pre-existing prejudice um yeah because they have the hegemony on their side yeah they can say you know hey you know you know what about women women be shopping haha -ha. and then that'll be you know that'll get them boosted because a ton of people already have that opinion because they inherited yeah. it from their parents or whatever um so i do think there's an advantage on the right on that but i i do i i do think that like there is great value i mean one of the things that I've talked about, like in in the past, in these conversations, like I mean, the the the, the argument uh, about about the value of debate has been one that has gone back and forth in these spaces since I've been in them. Like people are mm -hmm. like, ah, debate is totally useless. And um, why? And I, I don't. I'm sorry think to interrupt totally you, but like, 
why do people argue about that so much? It's like, why do we need to keep arguing about like whether video essays or debates are better? It's such a yeah. pointless yeah, argument. It is I pointless. Don't know. And I don't also, get it's it. kind of funny because it's like, well, if that's true, then why are you arguing about it? You know, if the debate is, if you're arguing, you're just wasting your own time by your own beliefs. Like, if, if the debate doesn't matter, then who cares? Just, to, you know, right? Like, your debate or on debates won't matter. <laughs> Yeah, or that like video essays can sometimes basically be just like a one-way debate where the, your opponent can't respond, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, it is functionally that. And and the thing is like I I think that both of these things can be useful in a similar way. Uh there you I used to rant about people like I used to sort of poke a lot of fun at like the de-radicalization conversation because um I don't know if you know this, but maybe you do, but I grew up in a uh, cult. Like my childhood hmm. was spent in a super Christian cult, a very radical one. So like de-radicalization is something that like I experienced firsthand um, as a lifelong, you know, uh, you know, early in my adulthood, leaving an extreme environment and trying to live a life outside of that environment. Um, and then watching other family members leave that church, that that extreme church as well, and find their way and change their views, um, I don't think that de-radicalization uh, like correlates with online content like in any of the ways that that people try to talk about it. Like I don't think that video essays or debates are a huge part of de-radicalization. I think they can be helpful. They can be supplementary. Where I do think they're useful is in um, inoculating people to manipulative ideas in making them familiar to um, potentially like uh, 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 toxic or like like helping people avoid conspiratorial thinking, teaching people to be like a little more critical and skeptical. Um, these are all things mm -hmm. I think that online debates and video essays can both be very valuable in this. But I, in my experience, at least in my very you know uh, you know intimate experience with these sort of radical spaces, I I just don't think that like most. If you're in a radical space, you're never going to see a video outside of your space. And even if you do, you're going to have a hundred different internal defenses that will make you dismiss that video. Mm -hmm. The thing that de-radicalizes yeah. people is people in their life, usually life experiences, um, things that they bump into. And I mean, I can speak from experience that like there were a lot of atheist videos that were of value to me once I had left the church. But when I was still in it, I was not open to that at all. I could, the only thing that was able to get through to me was a really close friend um, who was willing to sit there and just have hours long conversations about religion and beliefs with me. And was like, they had fun with that sort of thing. So it was kind of a miracle. And so did I. So we would just go back yeah. and forth. And it, and it led me on this very personal level to connect with somebody else and go, oh, wow, they're really taking the time to make me think about this in a different way, you know, whereas a video, I would just be like, ah, that's propaganda. And you're, you're literally programmed to like avoid that type of thing. So I don't know. Um, I think, the, the, yeah, the I think my take, is, yeah. I think my take on that is I think online content can help with de-radicalization, but I totally agree with you that uh, it's very rare that someone's going to get like fully de-radicalized without some sort of like real life human person yeah. in their life that is helping them. Because I was raised in a uh, in a conservative Christian household. I wasn't in like a cult, um, and I feel like I I did have parents that encouraged um, critical thinking, and they weren't like you know terrible people. Yeah. Uh, so I think that helped me along my my journey of that. And my mom has actually recently I think she was a conservative, but she's recently like a pretty liberal person. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been cool seeing her go down sort of a de-radicalization path as well. Or not not radical because she's never been radical, but at yeah. least a like leftward movement. But yeah. um, I I have a bit of a different experience. I think that when I was younger, um, like, yeah, definitely when I was like, uh, I'd say like early high school, if I would see like an atheist video or a video that had like more left wing ideas, I'd be much more dismissive over it. But I think it was just like a gradual process that the more and more I looked into these things and watched the videos, I just slowly warmed up to the ideas. And then it's been kind of a gradual process from there for me. Yeah. You know? I do think that like for people who aren't like super radicalized that like 
the media can have more of an impact in changing their minds, which is like, yeah, that is true. I, ne I never, I never was like a full on radicalized. I was just yeah. like your average conservative teenager, basically. And I, and, and that's one of the things I do think that like all of this type of content, debate and and video essays and all of these things where you're making a, a, a you're putting forward a specific argument for a topic, or uh, you know something that you believe in or whatever. I think those things are like. Uh, I, I do think they're valuable in that front. I, I, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I, I guess I was talking about the de-radicalization thing just because I, I hear it as something that people bring up all the time. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if, if these things function as like uh, de-radicalizers, like, I don't know, but, but I do think that they can, they can impact people and get people to think about things differently. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I, that's part of one of the reasons why I, I, uh, do content at all because I want people to think, you know, differently about subjects. I recently did a video about environmentalism, trying to get people to think about environmentalism differently um, and to actually think about environmentalism instead of just sort of like, uh, you know, climate change as a as like a political buzzword, like getting people to, to, to mm -hmm. engage. Think with like, more deeply. Well, you know, why why do we care so much? You know, what is the thing? And like, wh how do we adopt a mindset that like, will help us and that that includes combating climate change as part of a greater uh set of beliefs and, and and values so i do think that people's minds can be changed i know my mind has been changed by videos um and mm -hmm. so i i, I think I, I would yeah. say probably um i would say contrapoints would probably be the person i would point to as like the biggest person that changed me over from like uh, more of like centrist to like mm. leftist. Like I really connected with ContraPoints videos. Yeah. Um, I think I think my biggest issue with debate is just the fact that I wish it worked more like a dialectic. I guess is the word where like if you if someone makes a good point uh, in a debate, it's it's seen as like you're losing if you like are like oh yeah that's a good point I hadn't thought about that yeah. because you're basically like ceding ground to the other side in the debate and that's that person like beating you like I wish yeah. that debates worked more like conversations because it feels less like uh it, it can sometimes feel less like we're trying to get to the truth of the matter and more like we're trying to like beat the other side you know well and I think that that is like that is almost impossible to overcome in these spaces. And the reason for that is because uh, it's personalities clashing. It is it is brands clashing. It is people who are representing their channel and their community. Um, and there's an ego on the line and there's reputation on the line and there's, you know, money on the line in the, in the, in the big picture. I don't know how you avoid that uh, in YouTube stuff. And that's one of the limitations of the debate because I think that like, you know, when I was in, in, in engaged in debate a lot, you know, I would tell people specifically like the, you know, these debates aren't between uh, uh, you and and the other person. You are t you are speaking uh, to their audience through your conversation with them. And that is always the case with these conversations. And I think that like, yeah, um, and that's why I, I don't think I could do debate because yeah. I my brain just doesn't really work that way. When I'm having a conversation with someone, I want it to feel like we can connect on things and not like we're just trying to like speak past each other to influence yeah. an audience in that way. That's well, why I, I, I definitely conversations prefer conversations like, over debates. Yeah, I, I think conversations like this can have a, 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 a connective effect and they do diffuse the, the uh, ego a bit um, because mm -hmm. there's no longer like a, community versus community brand versus brand thing. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know that it, I, I know that some people will point to that as like, you know, making the debate itself completely valueless. I don't think it does. I just think that people have to engage. I don't think it, it does either. Yeah. yeah, it has to be engaged I, I, with a different paradigm. Like, I mean, I- I, I know I've been, yeah. I know I've been critical, but I do think debate can serve a purpose of, uh, like if someone makes a really good, there have been times where I watch debates and someone makes a really good point I hadn't thought of. And then that really influences my way of thinking moving forward. Yeah. Uh, I, it's just not something that I would be good at because I, I don't, my brain doesn't function very well in that way. Yeah. And it's hard too, because uh, a lot of, um, you know, when you're engaging in some of these higher stakes debates, uh, sometimes reaching the audience is very difficult because uh, you know the moment the debate ends, that that person is going to immediately start reframing things for their audience, 
and mm-hmm. it's it's hard to predict. You know, you, you could have a, a killer debate showing, and uh, and and really hit all of the good points, but the other person is just better at selling it to their audience afterwards. So mm-hmm. they they in good the in twi- the after talk twisting you know, and manipulating. Yeah, it. they just yeah. say, yeah, well, you know, this is a this is that, and this is the other thing. I mean, I I, I feel like certain um like certain certain people uh are are so good at i mean they're so they've primed their audience such to be a demagogue an example of this is like how a lot of um a lot of uh uh like scientist types like you know the bill nyes and the richard dawkins and all those during the atheism time they wouldn't argue with certain christians um like ken ham was a famous example where just nobody would engage with that guy and part of the reason is because like his audience was so primed um, that there was no way mm. that they were ever going to engage, no matter how good you did. Uh, he would immediately turn it, spin it into a sermon afterwards about how, ah, this is proof that, like, God has, you know, sent these people from Satan to try and test us. Yeah. And it, it does more harm to even engage them. So, you know, there's this whole science to, like, <laughs> there's this whole, I, I wouldn't even say science. There's this, there's like a, there's an arcane element to deciding what debates are worth having. And sometimes, no matter how good you do, even if you're the best debater on the planet, that person might just be able to reframe the narrative. I mean, God knows. I mean, I've I've had some debates where I was strong, but um, because in the following week, somebody took a clip out of context or whatever uh, and was able to spin a narrative off that, that it didn't even matter how good I did or how good my argument was or how prepared I was. Um, or there's can, a whole problem. Or there's... Yeah. There's just the problem of like audience size. Like yeah. if you as a small creator are debating someone with hundreds of thousands of followers, um, a lot of times, like no matter how well you do, their audience is just going to still say, oh, they were terrible regardless. And yeah. that can really fuck with your head because you're like, no, I think I made really good points in that, but I'm still having thousands of people saying that I did like a terrible job. Yeah. And that can definitely fuck with you. It absolutely can. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it, it absolutely can, and and it can it can also just damage the impact that that your work has. It's it is very complicated. I I I've never really understood uh, the I've <laughs> I've never really understood the the roots of of the uh, debate bro video beef. Like the the I understand mm-hmm. where it's at now. And to me, it's like yeah. very clear that it's like uh, loose associations of people um, who some of them have real tight connections, you know, like, uh, you know, like I'm I'm friends with with Xander Hall and Vosh. Like I know them IRL. I've you know, we, we've hung out. So like I, I yeah. have a, a, a tight connection to those people. But I don't have a tight connection to like other debate streamers that I can even think of. Like there's a ton of other people who do like debates all the time that I have no connection to whatsoever. But mm-hmm. uh, people on another side of things might perceive me as having connections to, to other people because I'm close to. So there's this there's that whole thing I was talking about where there's like the parasocial aspect of like how people are grouped together. Um, yeah. And and I think and, people... I, and I, I feel like. Yeah, I, I feel like I've. um <sighs> Like in the past couple months, I've definitely like tweeted about the leftist infighting and I legitimately was trying to come from a place of like, how can we figure out like, what is the issue here of why this keeps happening and what is like a way that these gaps can be bridged. Yeah. But then like, if you have a conversation with the wrong person, if you slip up and say something in the wrong way, if you endorse one person over another person, um, if, if you're seen as like, oh, you, you, now you're friends with that person on that side. And I'm like, I'm not friends with that person. I've only talked to him like once in my entire life. I was yeah. just trying to like hear out their side of things. Um, yeah, yeah it, it can just be very difficult to navigate. It is. It's arguably impossible to navigate. Um, and yeah. like, you <laughs> and know, that's kind of the conclusion I'm going to. Yeah. Where it's like, I, I mean, in some, you kind of have to take it on a case by case basis and like, because just because like the stakes are different in every conflict and there are a lot of people who will um you know uh pressure you to 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 associate in one way um god like i've i've made it one of the things that i feel like i have a small advantage um over over uh, <laughs> uh maybe other creators in this space is that from the get-go 
uh, I have always been extremely blunt and that uh, nobody, uh, if you try to tell me who I'm supposed to associate with in any way, that is going to uh, put a serious blocker on our relationship. Um, mm -hmm. if somebody ha if somebody's like, wants to come to me and say, Hey, this thing, uh, you know, we're mutual friends with this person and I have an issue. Can you, you know, what are your thoughts on this? What's your opinion? I'll do that. But the moment that anybody tries to be like, Oh, you associate with this person, you're friends with this person. I, I am just like, stop and consider what you're about to say. Because if, if I, if I feel like you're going to try and tell me from the outside who you want me to associate with, uh, I'll just not associate with you. Uh, I don't yeah. play well with people I, who try to tell me that kind of stuff. And so, like, and I make that clear, which means that, um, I mean, I've had people uh, uh, just just straight up cut me off because of, uh, asso because of associations or, or presumably because of associations that they don't like. I mean, I've mm -hmm. had somebody, I mean, I had a, a very specific example, and this was, um, this was some time ago now, but someone came on my stream specifically to basically yell at me because their community was mad at me because I was friends with Vosh. And that mm -hmm. conversation did not go well for them. Uh, I, and it, we ended up having no relationship whatsoever after that, uh, despite us having yeah. a re relatively friendly relationship because I said, um, you don't you don't have you don't even understand what you're coming to the table with you have all of these grievances from your perspective and that's totally fine i'm never going to say that you're not allowed to dislike this person but what you're trying to police is a friendship of mine and you're trying to do it based on something that i don't agree on the premises of what you're bringing forward um mm -hmm. i have like and i make I've, my I've, yeah, yeah. So, go ahead. sorry sorry to interrupt no you're yeah fine. i um I I had a moment like that kind of recently where I'm um, like, uh, I like President Sunday. I think President Sunday is a smart guy who has some good takes on things. But um, he uh, he said that I, I like disgust him because I refused to stop associating with Jesse Gender, and I was like, I feel like that's a bit uh, a bit extreme. But I also see I also see the flip side of it that if you don't cut out someone like if if someone is like legitimately it comes out that they're like a horrible abuser and then you just want to keep like being good friends with them there is the idea that you can become an enabler in that sense oh, if absolutely. you don't like cut off people but yeah. again doesn't that come down to that comes down to the whole like this needs to be uh properly like in my opinion like that has to be a case has to be built in that case um i mean mm -hmm. um like i don't exactly have like i mean with multiple people i have a history of being very blunt with with even people that i consider my friends i will tell them if i think that they are fucking up or if i disagree with their take uh you know i'm a very mm -hmm. very opinionated uh and i'm open about that but i mean also like a lot of times when people come to the table wanting you to disassociate with someone especially this is especially true for like the the uh the 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 horde of babbling chatter people and or twitter people um they don't ever have mm. anything of substance to bring to you um they have a bunch of grievances that they've spent a lot of time on in their minds uh that are based on premises you might not even agree on um i mean mm. there's so much stuff where i'm just like i don't agree with your characterization of those events i'm sorry we, uh, you, you know, if, if you were somebody who I was, you know, if I was, if I, if it was somebody that I knew and they came to me and said, here's the reasons why I think this person is dangerous or whatever. Uh, and I could go, okay, I don't really agree with what you're saying there, but you can't do that to a, a crowd of people on the internet who are all shouting completely different things and who have completely different justifications for why they don't want you to associate with somebody. Um, it's impossible. Yeah. Like, uh, and, and also like some people, you're just not going to be like, I'm not going to be open. I can't make myself open to every single person on the internet, you know? So it's just like, yeah. um, but, uh, but yeah, like I, I think that there are times where like there, like a line is crossed and it's like, Hey, like this is a, this is not cool or whatever. Um, but mm -hmm. that's, a, but that's, that's a judgment call. And most of the time, most of the stuff, let's be a hundred percent real like 90% of the stuff that people get mad on on the internet do not reach the level of like serious harm being done. Um, certain things, I think like uh, like really severe allegations, like frivolous allegations being levied against someone um, are like, 
I think that a case can be made for that, but people don't, don't usually bother. It's 90% uh, rumor mill, gossip. Uh, this is the reason why. Uh, uh, okay, well, if you don't agree on the premises, then that person, you, I don't know. There's too much of an expectation for people to like disown other people uh, uh, for, I ran into this issue even with uh, a conversation I had recently with uh, a, a creator named Soul Bunny, where mm. I sat down for a conversation and I had my critiques and we even got in a bit of an argument at times. But a lot of people in chat had this whole like history uh, uh, that was would have been impossible. Here are for me all to the know. tweets that Soul Bunny has exactly. made, and, and yeah. Even when I saw some of those tweets, I'm like, okay, yeah, some of that is like shit that I don't think I would, like, I think that's really shitty. And I think that this was like, I mean, there was even an example of like one, one part of that conversation where, uh, where just like, I was just told a lie to my face and I discovered that later, but how the fuck would I have ever been able to know that previous to that conversation when these are things that are happening in the replies of tweets and whatnot? You can't, and, mm -hmm. and then people were mad at me for ever even having the conversation at all because I didn't know the deepest lore of every interaction. So even in a situation where, uh, you know, uh, I had a lot of opinions in that situation, and I do think there were things that went wrong there, the expectation that's being put on me for having a conversation is, in my opinion, uh, uh, out of uh, unattainable, totally, totally unreasonable. It's completely unreasonable. Yeah. And people basically uh, treat everything like it's a a um, a mortal uh, sin that has been a like 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 again it's that thing it's you've now you have betrayed the future we're never going to get communism now because you didn't mm. know about these four tweets that happened in the re in six, six, 16 replies down in a now deleted yeah. thread and it's like okay you might be right that whatever was said in there is annoying and shitty and bad, but you need to keep it in scope and you need to keep the harm in mind. And that's one thing that I continually run into in like lefty spaces. Um, I mean, I, hell, I even yelled about that. Uh, there was a video that was made about Keffels recently. I got very, very mad about that video because I felt like um, the entire thing was just built off of uh, uh, invocations of, of, of horrible things that were done. It was just like, Keffels did this and no evidence is actually provided of any meat that even shows what is being alleged. And I mean, yeah, and, like, like when he, he showed the wall of the noodle tweets and said some of the most egregious bigotries to ever reach. I'm just this like, for space. real. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, exactly and what I'm talking I, about. I the foreign think, man video. I'm, yeah, I'm totally, the foreign man. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally some of the most with, egregious like, bigotries of all time. Uh, I feel harm like harm at scale was another example just because we're, yeah. I, I'm per per perfectly comfortable to be to be 100 percent specific with this video. When you're claiming that somebody did harm at scale, you got to evidence that. And if you don't, yeah. then you're going to get made fun of. And I am never going to say anything bad about people making fun of you for making a claim off off of the ass. But again, it's just like, and I, I, yeah. And I also think that that can uh, you can kill a potential like valid conversation that can happen when you blow it way out of proportion. Then it's like, OK, well, then, you know, we've missed out on some of the like we could have had a nuanced conversation about this. But you've said that this is like one of the most egregious bigotries of all time. And it's like, OK, well, now how are we going to actually like talk about this? Because I, I think that the way that Keffels keeps like trolling based on the noodles thing, I feel like I wish that she would stop like antagonizing with that but on but sure. you know people keep antagonizing her as well about the noodles thing um, yeah but i, I mean, feel like that i feel i feel like that would be the criticism is like you don't need to keep antagonizing the noodles thing over and over it wouldn't be like this is the most egregious bigotry to ever hit the leftist i, I said sphere. i'm so fucking tired of noodles jokes i don't ever want to hear a yeah. fucking noodles jokes again because it's not funny to me and i i it's just that's been my, that was my ground. approach yeah, i'm like this is this is why why like, but at the same time, I can't entirely blame someone for being like, oh my God, another video came out saying that I did paint at scale and then shows a bunch of pictures of, of like noodle conversation. And I just go, mm -hmm. this is fucking dumb. You know, like how stupid can you be? Um, but, but I don't know. Like, so again, it, most of it to me just comes off as people peddling really stupid and, and minor things 
as way bigger than they are and not being able to actually like sit down and engage in a, in a in a back and forth and say I think you're an idiot because you said this well I think you're an idiot because of this and then call it good you know fucking have it out and whatever instead it becomes like uh you know this person is 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 filling our spaces with x thing when there are people who do that by the way I 100% agree that like there are examples of people doing really harmful shit we have had mm -hmm. predators infiltrate uh leftist spaces in the past uh and and i've been witness to that i've been witness to them being ousted from the space almost unilaterally because that evidence came to light and i think that we should reserve that energy for cases where the evidence is good that but I just don't know. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how to convince uh, people to to just like take a step or two or maybe five back, uh, and maybe dial down the intensity just that much. When at the end yeah. of the day, one of the big problems is that uh, uh, in in a hyper spectacle space uh, of YouTube generally, anything big sells. You if, you know. Uh, a video that says I have a problem with you is not going to get as many clicks as they fucked my cat. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you, 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 it's yeah. just like, uh, it's so it's this problem. And I'm like, I want people to do better and I want people to see how it like negatively impacts the space. But in order for that to happen, I feel like there has to be like, they, a, they have to like set aside this big profit incentive that it, yeah. it's like, because I definitely I see from there I come from a bit of a privileged perspective where like my career is not dependent on like making money off of talking about leftist infighting yeah. like I the videos that I make I just talk about like Colleen Ballinger or whatever is like the latest you know yeah. thing um, kind of choose people to talk about but I totally understand like if you're in the position where you're like okay, I could make a video talking about, uh, um, you know, like direct action and get 100 views, or I could yeah. make a video um, attacking X leftist creator and get 10,000 views. Like, I'm obviously going to choose. And I feel like that is, I mean, it's a symptom of capitalism. I feel like there's like a big capitalist incentive that is uh, <laughs> ironically like, uh, you know, can cause poisoning within the leftist spaces, you know? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like I think that that like monetary incentive, um, excuse me, that monetary incentive affects so much of what's going on in these spaces. I just wish people would realize that it's over peanuts, you know, that people mm -hmm. like that you're really not making that much more by constantly milking drama, and you're not actually, and it doesn't last. Um, that's one of the things that uh, that like um, that I've learned a ton from I've, I'm still in this space after three years of streaming and being the subject, uh, we'll just say of controversy to be fair to everyone mm -hmm. involved. Uh, You've been uh, very shit on multiple times. Yeah. For sure. uh, there've been some, there've been some ridiculous things levied against me and I'm still here and I'm still making stuff. And uh, I've been, I've seen communities blow up around me. I've seen so many content creators come and go. I've seen so many people who felt like it was like, uh, they needed to make the drama content to get the clicks and it didn't actually do anything to save their channel because it doesn't last. It doesn't stick around forever. Uh, people stop getting mad about it. They stop caring about it. They get burnt out on being mad all the time. Um, they're not, they don't become attached to you as a creator and there, or your channel uh, for what it has to offer. They're just there for the drama. And I wish more people would realize this and maybe I'm banging this drum too much, but like I want people to like recognize that like there's nothing wrong with having a legitimate grievance with somebody there's nothing wrong with uh you know calling out somebody who's behaving egregiously in a space when they're doing that but uh it hurts everyone every single person even remotely attached to any of these spaces to turn it into a toxic cesspit where every every single action is like measured on the scale of did it prevent communism or did, or not it just it ruins mm -hmm. it it makes it no fun it becomes a no fun allowed zone it means everybody's always looking over their shoulder it means that uh actual grievances get totally buried as well uh because you know people can't actually sit down and have a conversation about real things that went wrong 
or whatever. And also, it means yeah. nobody wants to do anything with each other. So there's no uh, nobody fucking making any uh, stuff anymore. And, like, I don't know. Like, God, I think of there's so many situations of, like, uh, 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 just people firing so hard that it's, like, I can't tell, like, there are people I would never make content with again because of how ridiculously hard they went against me over something so stupid. Because I'm like, I'm never gonna sit down and uh, and uh, make a content with somebody who thought it was appropriate to write like uh, uh, a a uh, a manifesto on me or something like that. You know, I'm never gonna. That's never gonna happen. I'm just fuck that. Sure. Person. And I. Have but I, the but I think I think to, you know. I think people can overestimate the harm of like someone's actions, but then they can also sometimes on the other side overestimate the harm of like the people calling out the actions in like an imprecise true, way. True. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's and, true and as well. Yeah. Yeah. I I, th I think that's what I see happening is um, there will be someone who makes a statement that I agree is not great, but then people will be like, oh, well, this is the worst person to ever. And then it's like, that's where, um, and then once those people call that person the worst person ever, then the people on the other side are like, okay, see, these people actually are as bad as we think they are. And then yeah. that's how the spiral keeps going, you know? And I don't know what the answer is besides just like, I don't know, uh, just keep trucking. And, uh, you know, I have made a, there was a time where I was much more willing to engage in conversations that would be considered drama. And when I was, I had, you know, a, a lower, a lower threshold for what I was willing to talk about. Like when people that I, uh, when people were beefing or whatever, uh, and I've changed my approach to that a lot over the years. And, uh, mm -hmm. I tend to, if I touch drama, uh, I, I tend to approach it with a very specific goal in mind and, uh, and then mm -hmm. call it good. Um, and that's been a big change for me. And I think it's been a better change because uh, I have a whole bunch of other stuff that I do that people are super engaged with and super interested in and they stick around for it. I have this like, you know, so I don't know. So like that to me, I'm just like, wow. Like once you decouple yourself, once you're able to just step back and say like, I'm not gonna, uh, I don't feel the need to comment on all of these conflicts. I'm gonna only step in when I feel like I can really add something or when I can uh, hopefully try and direct things in a, in a meaningful direction. I do think that yeah. that can be relieving. And I think that it can be good for the community as a whole uh, uh, because there's a lot of stuff that just gets, I don't know, they're but just then, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, but what I've what's happened with me is I, tr I try to do that thing that you're talking about where you try and come in and give like, maybe a more constructive nuanced opinion on it but then yeah. people are like oh shut up fence sitting centrist like no one wants to hear your take about how both sides are bad um yeah. and that it, i agree that it can be frustrating to have someone like criticizing both sides at the same time because a lot of times people who are doing that are doing that because they're trying to be like a grifter who doesn't you know is spineless and doesn't want to piss off every anyone so that they can like make everyone happy and i i will admit i am a bit of a people pleaser i that is an issue with me where i don't like people not liking me i yeah. i am a I am a profoundly self-conscious person who wants people to like me, and I can sometimes uh, that can sometimes sway me in different directions. Where I am like, okay, I'm just going to go along with this, and that's something that I'm trying to like um, be, make sure that I am stronger on. But at the same time, it it does suck to feel misrepresented when you are coming at it from a perspective of really trying to uh, be constructive. Because, like I said. Me commenting on all the leftist infighting, it doesn't benefit me monetarily whatsoever. I think yeah. I think every time I talk about this stuff, I end up like losing followers from people on both sides because they're like, "Oh, here's Ryan again with another like both sides are bad take." Um, but it's like I don't know. I just like well, I really I, want the on, like I want the, the online left like, to get along. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've completely. Uh, uh, given up on the goal of the like online left getting along because for a couple of reasons that I could outline, you know, which is, I, I don't know. I think the online left at, is so nebulous as to be, there's no, for most of the people in the online left, there's no actual ties between them. Uh, even when they are per, sort of perceived as like a part of like a cloud of generally associated viewpoints, 
Um, there's just mm -hmm. actually no real connection between a lot of those people that, that leads them to have any social reason to care about the other people. So I think that's, I, I, yeah. I, the online left is like a thing that I, I used to believe in more. And I guess I've just become like an, a, an, an atheist on that, an agnostic. I don't know what the right word is, whatever. I don't believe in the, uh, I'm a no longer believer in like the, 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 the meaningfulness of the online left outside of literally just describing a cluster of loosely associated viewpoints and the people who hold those viewpoints because there's not actually a lot of connections. And I think that's true about even that even goes, even if you zoom in a little more in like online left leaning content creation, there's just a lot of people perceive bridges where there aren't bridges um, and associations mm -hmm. where there aren't actually associations. And, uh, and I think that, um, while I think it would be good if there were more of them, uh, I think the only way we, that that can actually be accomplished is by just like being being a bridge builder with as myself. Mm -hmm. Like I am going to connect with this person who I think is cool. I'm going to connect with this other person who I think is cool. And um, there are so many situations where I just completely refrain from getting involved. Um, there are yeah. ones where I got involved in one way and I, uh, looked, but look back on it and go, I don't know that, that my involvement here was even worth it or, or that I even yeah. really helped with anything. And one of the reasons for that is because like a lot of times, uh, people have, uh, like legitimate reasons for being super mad at one another. And mm -hmm. even if they like overstate it to some degree, there's no real way to tell somebody that without like minimizing their pain. That's a really hard yeah. bridge to cross. So there's a lot of times mm -hmm. where I will just be like, um, I, 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 I will just, just kind say, of step back and be like, I'll let you guys hash it yeah, out. Yeah, this is your, yeah. this is your problem. And uh, unless it directly involves me, I got other stuff to talk about. And mm -hmm. like I That's where I, I think I'm at at this point, honestly. Yeah. And I, I think it's a I think it's a totally valid approach because like again, like um people the, the infighting is is uh is always gonna happen to a certain degree. Um but I think mm -hmm. that like our efforts are 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 uh better are our, our, our energy is better spent uh just building just building the bridges ourselves instead of like uh, trying to get other people to, to preserve theirs. Cause some people are just really, they just like, they just, they're addicted to burning bridges. Some people are, some people are just really quick to the hip and there's nothing you can do about that. And if you try to step in and calm people down, they perceive that as a slight or, uh, or you do. I, mean, I know that I've done this. I know that I've, I've been well-intentioned, but I've ended up hurting somebody, somebody by accidentally minimizing something that they went through. And that's a regrettable position to yeah. be in. I hate finding myself in that position. So, you know, it's really hard and to like, it's really hard to like mediate in these spaces just because it's so hard to gauge what connections people actually have with each other. And sometimes they just don't want them to be preserved, you know? And I think, I think a lot of people in the audience can see and people on the internet in general can see that um, bread tube whatever that means, has definitely uh, kind of waned in popularity over the past couple of years. And I yeah. feel like when BreadTube was at its like most popular was when people were just like making good shit that was like interesting and like fun to watch. Um, yeah. I, I feel like that's I feel like that's what's going to bring because we are entertainers at the end of the day. And I mean, drama is always entertaining to watch people there's always going to be the tabloids and there's always going to be the drama yeah. you know but i feel like with leftism specifically what really draws people in is like i don't know making a really interesting video that gives a take people haven't thought of before and then like trying to build a community i just don't think i just don't think drama is like a it's not like a sustainable uh approach long term for like building any sort of coalition yeah you know? i don't think so at all i think it's uh i think that the the drama uh the the drama stands in the way of like the stuff that brings people to this space and that's a weird thing too because i've seen people in these spaces who came to the space because they were interested in uh discussions about uh how do we practically uh, address issues with capitalism? How do we think about like ways to better 
uh, ways to promote union membership and all these topics that brought them to the space and them slowly getting feeling personally involved in this drama until they become a drama mm -hmm. consumer and they're no longer even there for the stuff that they were there for in the first place, which is unfortunate. And I... Yeah. I can feel that happening to me when I'm on Twitter. I can feel like my brain rotting. I can like feel myself turning into like, no, I need to, if, if I give one more take, and I think that can, it can be an ego thing of like, no, if I just reply to one more tweet, I'm going to give the perfect take and everyone will finally see that like I was right all along, but it's like, no, that's never going to happen because you have these groups of people who have been like, like you said, they have their ideologue that they're looking up to and they, it's very unlikely that they're going to be like oh yeah that's an interesting perspective that i haven't heard before yeah um i just think i don't know i just don't understand i wish more people could come into things with more of a um perspective of humility and being willing to say like i'm not going to have the right take every single time i'm going to fuck up i'm going to make mistakes I'm, you know, I'm willing to apologize for my mistakes, but I'm also not going to, you know, buy into the narrative that like I've, you know, killed puppies if I make a small mistake, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think that like one of the reasons why I like, like personally, I want to encourage people to, to do that, like take three to five steps back for a bit Yeah. is um, because I, I, I think that these spaces are healthiest when there are lots of new people coming into them and lots of uh, new creators and uh, new voices and that those voices aren't just entering into the space to be a proxy for another uh, creator. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't mean that to be disparaging just to the, to the creator that's stepping into the space because I think sometimes that like, uh, I mean, I talked about this like um, in, a, in the recent drama that I, I did step into, uh, which a little bit, which was, you know, I said that I worry that sometimes there are people who are established creators who have such a grudge against someone else that they'll take a, a small creator that's like, you know, talks on the issue and they'll boost that one thing. And, and, and it gives mm. this incentive of like, oh yeah, okay, so what I gotta do, it creates like a whole little army of people who go, okay, well, if I make the next video that's shitting on the creator that they don't like, then I'll get boosted just like this one. And that's like the worst yeah. thing you wanna create because that just makes stagnation. And, 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 you know, so there's that whole problem. And then there's also this other aspect of like, um, if everything is, if, if so much of the content in a space is centered around, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, knives to the throat, you know, knives out, uh, we're, we're, we're fighting for control of the space. People burn the fuck out. And the people mm -hmm. who burn out the most are the people who are taking the most risks and are getting the least back, AKA the newcomers to the space, the people who aren't making all the money yet, the people who don't necessarily have it sustainable yet. Why the fuck are they going to ever sit down and make a, and take all the effort it takes to make a video or to stream. If all that is going to end up happening is that they're going to get sort of like lifted up as a pawn to be used in a bigger struggle. Uh, it causes chest, massive yeah. burnout rates. And, and, it, and I, and God, it sucks. And it means that this place stagnates because you don't have new people. It's just the same old people, uh, uh, slapping each other over and over again. And, and yeah. I think this is, yeah, it all does go back to capitalism where like it is, it's a lot scarier as a small creator who like wants to like have their, they want to be able to make enough money to like pay the bills Oh yeah, and like, it's a lot easier to say, okay, well, the easiest thing for me to do is to like be the an orbiter of this creator because they have a big, massive built-in audience. They can give me some of their audience and that'll help me grow. It's a lot like uh, scarier to say, I'm just going to try to forge my own path and be like my own thing. And so I don't even necessarily fault people that start, like, I feel like I'm in a pretty lucky position that I feel like I am not really an orbiter of anyone and that I can't, yeah. kind of can stand on my own like i have friendships but i i um i feel like that would feel like such a um such a it puts you in such like a trapped place where you feel like my entire identity is defined by the person i'm orbiting and then if the person you're orbiting decides okay well you've had a take that is too far so now you're kicked out of the sphere and then it's like okay well oh, now your man, entire those career orbits is over are crazy toxic this is why i like constantly uh every time people bring up the word orbiter i tell them to stop using the word orbiter and i'm like mm. uh stop it's kind of disrespectful to those people because like yeah we should 
we should respect the autonomy of these people that they they do have a, an existence outside of just being an orbiter of ex-creator. You know? Well, and also people don't realize that, yeah, first of all, most of the things that most of the time people call orbiters, they're not really orbiters. They're just people who like got their start like being a fan of or being in the community of uh, another creator, which is just how it works. That's how it works for everybody. Like this isn't, I mean, any artistic trait is like this. You know what I mean? Like you have an artist mm -hmm. that you are, I mean, God, I remember in film school, like uh, uh, people were, I remember these really talented uh, 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 film students who made these hilarious short films in my film school that I went to. And they were su clearly super inspired by uh, Quentin Tarantino. Obviously, they watched his films. They had stuff that they wanted to borrow from him and all this shit. Nobody would call them an orbiter. They might say, oh, you're inspired by this, but it, w it would be insane to be like, oh, you're a Quentin Tarantino orbiter. No, they're they're inspired by this. This is where they got their start. And, you know, if they continue a healthy growth, they'll spiral into their own thing and hopefully not just become stuck in this single style. But this the, the yeah. orbiter, like the orbiter paradigm that so many people still talk about is... Uh, the actual communities that have orbiters are so toxic and the relationship is the the orbit is is old ends with them getting sucked in and all of their audience being collapsed to whoever is being orbited in the end it's a consumptive mm -hmm. setup the orbiter thing is like i i w people have asked me in the past like what i what what is like one of the piece of advice that you will give to small streamers and one of them is something that I did myself, which was when I started, I would stream when I wanted to stream whenever I did not ever consider whether whether another streamer that I liked or associated with in the past was streaming at the same time. Uh, I know that like hmm. when I was a small streamer, a lot of people would be like, well, I don't want to stream at the same time as X content creator. I don't want to stream at the same time as X slightly larger content creator. I don't want to put a video out on the same day as this person because the idea that you want to like, you know, get their viewers or whatever. And I was like, fuck that. I want people who are going to watch me for me. So I would do it whenever yeah. I would often stream at the people who I was most associated with. You know, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, people knew me as a chatter, uh, way back in the day in Vosh's community because I would just hang out there. This is before I even became a streamer, or even thought about being a streamer. I was like, Hey, cool. This chat's interesting. I like following this stuff. But, um, you know, I would, I would stream whenever I wanted and I would talk about my stuff and that's been strong, a, a strong decision that I've stood by all the way this entire time because it's, it breaks the orbiter effect. It says, okay, mm -hmm. people should come to you. Uh, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't, the, the orbiter concept is, is, is a strictly hierarchical view of a space yeah. that produces hierarchical results and people should stand on their own because not only does that mean that more people are going to the, come into the space generally who might move back and forth between different creators, um, but also as a creator, you're not going to become beholden to somebody who may not even know you exist. And so, these hierarchies at the end of the day mostly just benefit the people at the top of the hierarchies. Like it, you can get a temporary benefit from being in the orbit, but really like the person who's really benefiting is the person with all the power to like determine who is in their orbit and who isn't yep. in their orbit, you know? Yeah, and and of course in, in the most toxic cases where the orbiters are actively being farmed for content and or being encouraged mm. to, uh, you know, uh, uh, people call you know sometimes people call them the waiting room streamers you know where it's like oh yeah. this person isn't on okay well we're gonna watch uh we're gonna review this thing that that content creator just did right before they go live and then you know i'll go i'll stop streaming right when they go live and that's like super <laughs> I just, toxic i feel bad for those people yeah i feel horrible Honestly. i would never i would i wouldn't do it that's the thing like for me i would just quit i'd be done if that was yeah. my if that was my fate but some people, you know, I don't know. I guess they perceive it as a path to uh, victory, but it's not. It's not. It's it's like uh, it's it's a it's a the, the the you know it's a cursed wish of like oh will I get a raid that has a bunch of people in it? Maybe you might. Are those people gonna stick around for you and your content, or are they just you know now that their favorite streamer's off, they're gonna sit and click on you? Well, the answer is usually I've the always... second one. 
Yeah. I've always thought that being a good artist is about like striking that balance of finding good inspirations and like not being afraid to take the elements that work from these inspirations, but then figuring out a way to synthesize that into your own unique voice yeah, and something yeah, that totally. people haven't necessarily heard. Cause I would say like, I'd say my biggest inspirations are probably like Danny Gonzalez, Bo Burnham and ContraPoints. I would say like, they those are based. probably the three creators I like look up to the most. Good inspirations. Um, yeah, I, I think all three of them are really great in different ways. Um, but, you know, I try to not, uh, it can feel like shit when you put out something and someone's like, oh, this is this Bo Burnham that I'm watching? It's like, you know, you want yeah. to uh, figure out how to, but that's that's always going to happen. People are always going to call you derivative and compare you to things. Sure, and, and I mean, thing in it I, I've gotten, I, I've had people try to say that, usually in very mean-spirited and super nonsensical ways. And uh, it is shitty. It does feel like shit, but also it kind of betrays the the mentality of the space that like people are so close minded and they're so fixated on a handful of creators that they can't even imagine uh, somebody having some stylistic similarities, but doing other things differently. And that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's part of the reason why I do want to encourage, uh, you know, more people coming into the space with different, uh, you know, with different talents and different focuses. I mean... Uh, it makes me really happy when when I see uh, other creators showing up who start to bring in an audience, you know, that's uh, that maybe has overlap with mine, but there's stuff that brought them here that's different. And that just, again, it just grows the space generally. It makes it not a stagnant swamp, but like a thriving environment. And I wish to see that. I wish to see that there was like this, this like, uh, where... I don't know where the, the the small conflicts got washed away by the sheer fact that there's so many other people doing so much cool shit that the little drama mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't dominate the space. But I don't think that's where we're at right now. Uh, like, yeah, that's what, that. It doesn't it doesn't feel that way. It feels like the drama is what is like because drama human conflict is gonna like naturally arise. There's always going to be conflict. There's always going to be something where someone does something wrong and slights another person. But yeah, it just feels like from from like the outside looking in or even from the inside looking around, it just feels like drama is what is so much at the forefront of everything right now. It's definitely become that way even more so. Like, I think that like, I mean, <sighs> Twitter had a huge hand in this uh, and the downfall of Twitter has only made it worse. And I think that there's like, my hopeful side says, that we're entering into a new paradigm because Twitter is totally fucking, I mean, sorry, X is X. Uh, totally yeah, don't, fucking Don't toast. dead name. Yeah. Don't dead name it's, X. Uh, it's like, it's like rip. Yeah. It's like, uh, as Chad's saying, it's, it's rip bozo at this point. Like, uh, it is the dregs. There is nothing happening. Uh, there was a point where Twitter discourse, uh, was so, so plentiful that you could have, you know, that multiple streamers could give their opinion on like a trending topic and it wouldn't be seen uh, just as like an attack against a particular person. It would just be, hey, this is the topic everybody's talking about. We can do segments on this. It was like, you know, I mean, people used to do Reddit content on YouTube back in the day where they would take a topic that was trending on Reddit and talk about it on their stream and it would be, it would be, you know, and then, of course, over time, it became more and more, like, terrible and, and siloed off where it was, like, and I think that's where we're at. And I think, like, well, we've passed that now. We're at the point where, like, Twitter is t so unusable and so useless and the discourse cycles are so toxic and stupid that, like, you can't even make videos out of it. You can't even build off of it anymore. And so there's this period, yeah. I, I'm thinking, Building where, off of it is just going to be making another drama video. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, when I talked about the, uh, the, the, the foreign man Keffel's video, um, I... I hadn't streamed. I did like a 10 hour stream that was insanely long. And then I took like six days off and I came and, and during that time, all I saw was people talking about that shit on multiple social medias. And I have a pretty uh, diverse follow list of people that I follow. It was just so much of it. And I came back, I'm like, why the fuck is everybody talking about this? Why is everyone talking about this? Nobody's talking about anything fucking else. And so I sat down and watched mm -hmm. the video and I said, this is fucking ridiculous. I understand why everyone's talking about it, but what the fuck? How, how stupid of yeah. a topic. And, uh, and I think I, 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 I regret in some ways even talking about it to talk about it 
But at the same time, I'm also like, I hope that I was able to like point out the fact that like the root issue is so fucking boring and everybody's bored of it. Everyone, nobody's enjoying co talking about this anymore. Even the people yeah. who have made videos about it. Feels like getting clearly... into their trenches. Yeah. So it's like, what can we, can we not just acknowledge this, that this has become miserable and, and. I just hope that I hope that I can encourage people to like deep breath, uh, you know, grass touch a little and 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 let's get some new stuff. Let's get some new content going here because I feel like we could, uh, you know, we could do with it. It's 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 overdue for for people bringing in some original stuff for fucking cooling down some of this ridiculous uh, uh, this ridiculous claims that are being levied against people. And uh, yeah, I think. I think my take is that at the core of the issue that causes the spiral is that you have creators with big egos who don't really want to admit when they make a mistake because that uh, is very damaging to their brand. And it makes sense that if you like are admitting that you make a mistake, then you might like miss out monetarily by that. Yeah. And then you have people trying to criticize those creators, but then they're overstating the harm of those creators. Yeah. And through, through overstating that harm, then that just reinforces in the audience of those creators that, oh, see all the people who are criticizing us are just completely toxic and, and wrong because they're making these like crazy overblown accusations. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, that's obviously not gonna lead to any sort of constructive dialogue happening. Yeah. And I maybe maybe we need to enter the era of the Giga Chad, where people just say, uh, 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 "I don't care uh, anymore." Uh, that that you say this that you say that I uh, have done a no growth and uh, and you know just say okay fine uh, you know demonstrate it or shut the fuck up and I don't know maybe that's where I'm at. Where it's like, yeah, uh, I don't know, like. But then, but then the other, but I, I do always see the other side of it that I don't. The Giga Chat of just like I don't care that I did something wrong, like that does like allow bad behavior to fester, and like, I, I don't want to get into like too much specific drama and stuff, but I definitely think um, the fact that Keffels did the thing where she um, like ran the gay ops on people. Um, I just think like relying on the tactic of like using lies to get what you want is like a pretty, uh, I, I don't think that's like a good strategy that's going to lead to like healthy, you know? Well, I don't know. See, when I look at that one, I, I go and I say, okay, so we could, we could talk about specifics on this one. Cause this is one where I, I, uh, I saw the clip. I've seen the clip. I've been here for the whole, uh, the whole conversation and when I when I saw that, I just went, "What what am I supposed to care about here?" Uh, uh, Picru avatars uh, uh, are a a uh, uh, like a like a almost like laughable uh, click uh, of people online that isn't even like clearly defined, and you want to troll them by making a Picru and and acting like they act. And I can't get myself, I can't get mad over that. And I can't see it as like a, a, a racist act. And I can't see it as even mattering at all. I think that people were, and this is my opinion on that, uh, uh, which was, I think that some, some people were looking for something like a smoking gun to be like, this is the proof that Keffels is the bad person that we said. And I just can't, mm -hmm. I, I mean, the terminology uh, of gay ops is obviously, I don't like that terminology, but also uh, it sounded, if I'm being completely honest, it comes off as very clearly in jest and the result was nothing. Um, no one was hurt by it. Uh, there was like four people that even made fake Picru accounts and they said things like, mm, honey, I'm canceling you. And I'm just like, nobody got hurt by that. Uh, it's like, I don't know. I can't, again, this for, is one of those situations me, where I'm just like, I can't imagine people still being mad about that when, uh, when it just didn't amount to anything. Nobody was actually hurt. The only person who got offended by that was people who sort of volunteered that I'm as a member of the Picru Mafia, I'm angry that you're mocking me. And it's just like, well, you're 
an anonymous person. That's the whole thing. The pit crew thing is you're an anonymous person. You don't put your face on the internet and you're goofing around and you're saying things here and you're saying things there and somebody decided to goof on you in a way that, uh, I don't know, maybe came off as slightly edgy. I don't even think it's that edgy. I've seen some crazy edge on the internet. I don't think saying like, oh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do gay ops on the pit crews. Like to me, that just comes off as like a very obvious joke. And I don't know, I can't- For, well, it it, it was it was less about that and it was more about that Keffels was saying like we want to do this to uh like confuse them and make them like not sure about like who is real and who is fake um yeah. which is like a tactic that people use with like gay ops and i i don't think it's as much about direct harm with that and more about the indirect harm of i do think um you I have a pretty principled stance against like encouraging people to spread misinformation just because I think that that's like something that is a is something that is going to head down a bad path not always but I don't know that's that's something that I have a pretty principled I I really don't like um the tactic of saying like hey let's like spread lies about these people in order to get what we want because then the people you're doing that against will start spreading lies about you. And if but it we wasn't normalize really spreading that, like, lies about any specific person, it was like, here's a bunch of anonymous people who use pit crew avatars and who are super, tri who are like super mad at me. And I'm going to make some pit crew avatar anonymous people to show how silly it is to like try to wage identity politics war on Twitter via pit crews. Right? Like I, I when I think of misinformation, I think of like, uh, you know, RFK Jr. going on 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 Joe Rogan to talk about vaccines or whatever. That's what I think of when I sure. think of misinformation. I don't think of like, uh, like I don't know. There it's are like scales anime to misinformation. People, right? Like I mean, because I mean, like I don't know. I I can I think it would be funny if somebody made like a like an anime avatar account and and you know and and it's just a truth of the internet that anybody can make a, a, an account at any time. And so like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, I think at least for me, the way I look at it is like, it comes off as like the point being that, uh, you know, an anonymous, you know, 100 follower account on, on Twitter can be anybody at any time. It could be, uh, your grandma, it could be your next door neighbor. It could be a federal agent. You never know. And it doesn't really matter. And so the joke was, watch we can make pit crews too and say ridiculous things i had never to me that never registered as anything other than like at work at most a prank and i i so i i found the the like i find holding that against keffels in my opinion to just be like a stretch and and mm -hmm. i can understand where there's like some discomfort with like uh the terminology used um like i i the gay ops thing i don't even know like I don't even know. I don't even know what was intended there. Like the goal was obviously like let's troll them, and I think that like some people uh, uh, maybe took that to mean something else. I, I at least from my perspective, it comes off pretty clear. Like we're gonna troll these people who are in my comments, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, but I think that oh yeah, yeah somebody think... says in my chat like I love I have there's a, there's an account that impersonates me and it's called Demon Mama Fake and it's one of my favorite accounts on the internet because it, it like i now know but who the difference was, but but yeah but i feel like the difference with that is that that person is probably doing that to like uh because they're a fan of you whereas like doing it with more of a malicious intent to like infiltrate their space and make it so that like they can't tell i know it's trolling and i know it is a prank but i think that trolling and pranks can still I just think that normalizing the idea of, hey, let's make fake accounts to, like, infiltrate a space is a pretty, like, it's just a tactic that I don't agree with across the board. I and maybe we fair. can, like, agree to disagree with on that. No, I mean, I, I think I hear where you're coming from. I just feel like, uh, like, if it was, like, if we were talking about, like, a Discord or, like, a... a a, an actual like existing community but i don't think that like the pit crew community is a real thing i think it's just like uh it's kind of like anime avatars like okay like i've made jokes about anime avatars on twitter where it's like uh you know and i've in fact i've seen like viral tweets being like uh me i you know like me says take worst you know worst opinion you've ever had anime avatar you know what i mean like that kind of like format of joke making fun of people with anime avatars mm -hmm. like i feel like an anime avatar is like almost like a butt of like 
like a common joke at this point. I don't see much difference between that and being like, I'm going to I'm going to take down the pick because like, I don't think the pick represent even a specific community. I just think it's like a, a trend of like, mm -hmm. there's like a bunch of people well, I mean, who happen to use pick -trues. So I don't know. I don't really feel like, like there was anything serious being said about we're going to infiltrate the pick -trues. It sounds to me more like a joke, like being like, like I said, like if you sub submitted that out for like, we're going to infiltrate the anime avatars. Like I don't feel like there's any mm -hmm. infiltration that could actually happen. It was more just like a, over the top statement. Well, well, she said, yeah. well, she said, well, like infiltrate tender queer Twitter is like what she sure. said as far as that goes. Um, and tender queer, that's also kind of like a nebulous term, but I also don't really love, uh, love the term tender queer, but obviously there is a, a phenomenon of people who are hungry cancel culture. Like they just want to jump on and like tear someone down with like and I understand the frustration with that. And I understand where she was coming from, where she would get to the point where she felt like she wanted to do that. That's just something that if, if I ever with my audience was like, hey, make fake accounts to troll X community, uh, I would think that would always be something that I would call out as something that I think isn't OK to do. Yeah. Now, as far as saying that's like the most egregious bigotry to ever hit the online left, like, yeah, that's definitely an overstatement of harm. And that's definitely something that uh, isn't going to it's it's not gonna lead to any constructive dialogue happening there you know yeah i mean i definitely think it was it was like it, it's edgy to be like yeah let's get some fake accounts going on here and goof around but i i just i have a hard time seeing it beyond like uh beyond trolling and i i feel like the fallout has been uh like no, nothing you know like n tender queer twitter if it even exists which i don't even know if it actually exists i think it's like i think that's more like a like a like almost like an invocation of like a general trend uh it's one of those terms like i mean we talked about bread tube and how we don't even know if that exists so i think it's kind of like one of those things where it's like uh, a general association that you can acknowledge yeah there's like there's sort of these loose groups of people who run together and a lot of them happen to have pick crew avatars and whatever kind of like the anime avatars but it's not really like a hard community of people it's not like you're like going into mm -hmm. their houses and pretending so you can steal their toast or whatever like i guess it's just that's that's the way i look at it but i can understand like having a aversion to like anybody being like yeah let's make some fake accounts because i because i get that that's yeah. like a that can be a really dirty thing that people do i just usually when i like at least from my perspective and this is not me trying to say you're wrong in any way just my perspective is like when i worry about fake accounts it's like how the stuff is being used because i mean sure uh, yeah she, she wasn't like encouraging them to go dox people or something yeah like. nothing like that it was just like let's like goof around and and say absurd things with a picker avatar and i mean i think in the broader context of having seen that clip like the point was like oh anybody can spin up a picker avatar and say anything they want so let's do the same and i don't know that's kind of true like anybody can make anything on twitter i say that all the time i'm like my rules for Twitter were all have, you know, I used to have a whole like, like the imps code. I, I'm not on Twitter barely at all anymore. So I don't really use it anymore, but it was just like, you know, one, one part of that, the supplementary thing was like, always remember that you could be arguing with a federal agent or a 14 year old at any given moment. So just don't mm -hmm. get too invested where it's just like, so yeah, I don't know. But I, I guess I don't remember what, what the original point of, of this was. It was just me kind of saying, like, I think that people have held that against, like, against Keffels really hard in a way that I'm, like, I'm not comfortable with personally. I think it's, like, you know, I mean, even in the video essays I've seen, I think it's been used as, like, a justification to, like, allege, like, a deep level of racism or something. I just don't think that's mm -hmm. true. I just don't think it's accurate, you know? And I mean, God knows, uh, there's been way edgier jokes than that that have gone on in this space. There have been way edgier behavior, even from the side, uh, the, the side of things. I mean, there's one you called out. I know you called this out. I've seen your tweet on this, like the, the Jesse Gender uh, uh, liking the, that one meme about, sh about Shark 300, which was like, wow, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a, I'm not a like policer. But that's a pretty, that's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, red flag like going on there. Um, yeah. And 
Uh, and I know from and, Jesse's perspective, she was like, no, I'm just hyping up my black friends. It's like, well, no, but you need to still be careful about, you can still have a pretty negative impact. You have to put yourself in Shark's shoes that seeing that kind of shit could really fucking get to him, you know? Well, I mean, it did. I had that sit down with Shark uh, specifically because, like, I wanted I wanted to hear his perspective on things and give him an opportunity to speak his mind because I hadn't seen him really mm. talk about it much. He made one video initially in response to like a video that happened a long time ago, but he's never, I've never heard him talk extensively about, you know, how he feels about the whole extended drama and the way that it's become like shorthand um, mm -hmm. to, to, to like yeah, use I his just... face as a substitute for a racial slur. And I'm just like, ah, oh, man, like this has gotten out of hand, I... right? Like, I felt uh, sad for him that yeah. he felt like he was in a place where really it, it felt like he had uh, gotten to a point where nuanced discussion about it wasn't really something he was interested in having at the time, which is like a fair thing if you feel like you've been really wronged. But it just shows the deep hurt that keeps happening with these drama cycles that yeah. we're get, people are getting to the point where they're like, no, I've, I'm past the point of having a conversation about this and I'm at the point where I'm like, no, I feel like <laughs> these people are terrible people that are irredeemable or whatever, you know? And I think a lot of the times with these, with with the types of dramas that get as toxic as they, you know, as the ones we've been talking about, I think a lot of times there tends to be, um, like, there tends to be uh, uh, a handful of people who are heavily motivated who sort of drive all of the rest of the discourse on it. And I, I think that as a space, if that's true, which I think it is, uh, like, I mean, I think there was a handful of people uh, like in the the broad, to talk about, to, to just stick on Keffels, on the broad issues that people have had with Keffels, which boy, people have been mad about Keffels a lot for a long time. And I think mm -hmm. that the core of it boils down to a very small amount of people who really have a bone to pick with Keffels and basically firing everything they can until they find a few that other people can uh, are can generally be like yeah I think that's kind of bad but the the mm -hmm. but but it's not just that because there's of course a lot of other people who are willing to go more than that who are basically now I'm on board this thing actually is did frustrate me so now I'm on board for the whole thing and then it becomes this this snowball effect and I feel like if people yeah if I've, I've never like, been yeah. like I've I've had a sorry to interrupt I've had um I've had good conversations with Keffels and I um I definitely don't just because I think I can see where people are coming from where like one thing is bad that doesn't mean i'm gonna jump on board and say oh yeah saying noodles are tasty means that she's like a racist like yeah, i think know. that's that's and that's one that's a perfect example the whole noodles thing comes from like two people who fucking hate keffels's guts and those people have pushed this thing for so long that it's eventually been picked up by other people who have less grounded justification uh, for disliking Keffels or they might have some more personal reason, but they've decided to just jump on board with this. And I'm just like, if we can convince the, the, the general populace of these spaces, if we can convince the general populace to just take a few steps back, maybe this type of like bone to pick type stuff is less likely to turn into a like life ruining months long discourse cycle. Because like, I'm going to be real. Like, um, like Keffels has been uh, the obsession of especially Twitter for a really long time. And I think it's deranged. Mm -hmm. I think it's really genuinely unhealthy. Like I, I can't even imagine even if Keffels, even if Keffels had done the full strength version of what some of these claims against her are, I still can't imagine because like her being the subject of, of so much ire for so long. Like, it's just so out of step. And so I'm just like, man. It is definitely disproportionate. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, it's crazy I disproportionate. Think there are definitely things that she has done that I do think were bad, um, mostly revolving around, like, lying, which is something that I just don't gel with super well. Sure. Um, but I think I also see her perspective that she was the victim of one of like the craziest hate campaigns on the internet like ever yeah. with kiwi farms and that it, 
this is just like how people's brains are going to work that if you have ptsd from like being intensely misrepresented and harassed and attacked for months on end that it's going to make it a lot harder moving forward for you to be like okay yeah let me hear out these criticisms in good faith you know because well, yeah. it it causes your brain to build up this wall where you're just going to be like no i don't want to hear that the last time i tried to hear people out i got doxed and attacked you know yeah i feel like um did you ever see Lindsay ellis's video about like uh the cancellation link. yeah yeah which is no longer available on youtube well it is it's been re-uploaded which you know i'm glad about that personally i i don't i don't i hate like it be i hate it be like a video like that being taken out of the hands of the creator but also i do think is a very valuable video and like or contra points dealing with like a bunch of people like there there might have been a valid criticism that i think it was like buck angel was in a video and like i don't really like buck angel as a person I think but buck i definitely would not go yeah, but I definitely would not go to the the point of saying like, oh, well, ContraPoints has betrayed the trans community because she had Buck Angel in a video. It's like, yeah, and I mean, yeah. I I think it was a, um, it was it's or like um like so much of it is like yeah, so like on that like when I listen to like the Lindsay Ellis video uh, especially, I I think is like the perfect example of just explaining how you over time with with in these insane and un unreasonable accountability processes you become it becomes impossible to ever actually listen to feedback from the internet at large which pisses off tons of people but you have no choice uh because um because the internet at large is in with each incident becomes more deranged and it's it's more you can't actually get anything of value from that you're just getting a stream yeah. of hate and I mean that's something that happened uh, to me on to, on a much larger on a much lesser scale not larger lesser scale significantly lesser scale <laughs> where there was yeah. a a part of there's a point in time where I just was like okay I can now recognize that a lot of the uh, way a lot of the people talking about me online a lot of the attention that I'm getting online is people being totally unreasonable they have received a narrative from someone who doesn't like me and they are giving me feedback and they're going to get mad that I'm not listening to their feedback. Um, and I just have to ignore it. And I have to trust that like the people that I keep near me, uh, uh, and the people who will tell me when I'm fucking up, will do a good job at that. And you know, then that, mm -hmm. but that's not always satisfying to people from the outside. It's, it's definitely not to a lot of people. And I recognize that there's a and lot that's... of people on the internet who just won't like me. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. something I'm trying to come to terms with is that sometimes people just aren't going to like you and that you're not going to be able to convince every random person on Twitter to see your side in things. And yeah, I, I think another example of that, like ContraPoints went through the whole thing with Buck Angel, but then ContraPoints in like a recent video called out Vosh. And I feel like ContraPoints had a somewhat valid critique that like ironic misogyny towards like JK Rowling isn't necessarily going to like help trans women. That feels like a valid critique to me. But then she followed that up by saying that Vosh clearly doesn't care about trans women at all. And it's like, okay, well, that is a crazy claim. Like, yeah. what do you have to back up? Like, you really don't think that Vosh cares about trans women, even though he talks, he's like one of the biggest av advocates on the internet for like trans issues and one of the biggest people who pushes that like trans, like, does these trans debates like i i don't see how you could come to that conclusion that he doesn't care about trans people you could maybe come to the conclusion that he's like careless and overly edgy and like prioritizes his like need to make edgy humor over like the needs of trans women sometimes that's yeah. more where i would like come from it but i wouldn't come from it saying like this shows that he doesn't care at all about trans women and then it's like now uh counterpoints audience of millions of people is like okay well yeah vosh doesn't care about us at all and it's like okay that's yeah and that's it's, way it's, overdoing it i mean sometimes it literally is just a problem with power right you get some you get some power even if it's a small amount of power and you might be tempted to misuse it uh, in a really mm -hmm. spiteful way I mean, maybe, maybe ContraPoints really does believe that. Uh, I can't, I feel like it was not well evidenced and I felt like, I mean, I had that, when I watched that video, I felt like it actually like derailed from the rest of the video, like pretty notably. Um, yeah. And it I was felt just like, like a personal, it felt like a personal grudge. Extreme it's, pettiness. It was a personal yeah. grudge. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know. And you shouldn't let personal grudges 
discount the validity of the points that you're making because you do have a responsibility to like be accurate in the claims that you're making if you're making accusations against people and you shouldn't just be like oh i don't like this person so i'm gonna make this really crazy over overblown claim about them you know yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you and i think that like i do think that like the the uh intermingling of uh, of the hyper personal and the hyper political in these spaces mm -hmm. makes that such a big issue in that it where it isn't yeah. in other spaces like again if uh if if a food review youtuber and uh and another food review youtuber are beefing at each other what are they going to say oh you know he he did a crime against burger tasting it just it's not the same as being like this person is violating uh, is 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 violating their uh, uh, you know or, is, or is, I should say is misusing trans people and wants to steal their thunder you know and doesn't actually care mm -hmm. about them wants to use them for personal gain wants that to has clout way chase more, off of them and profit off of them yeah, yeah that has way more punch than like a burger person of two burger YouTubers calling each other idiots who don't review well you know or mm -hmm. something like that and there's this problem which I think is like I don't know how you fix that. I haven't figured that one out yet. I don't know. I don't know how we fix that or if there really is a way outside of just being like, uh, at least diagnosing that, or at least understanding that this is a thing that happens because I think yeah. leftism, I think leftism does have some infighting kind of baked into it. And there has always been like leftist infighting, especially because like anarchists versus Marxist Leninists versus <laughs> yeah. democratic socialists. Like yeah. th these are I, I like wildly kind of stuff is mostly healthy. Like, I think that like the dis that part is like I think is is gr is is the good part of leftist infighting. The fact that people do the ideological have beliefs, discussion. Yeah, that they yeah. do have beliefs. They are interested in 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 testing those beliefs and figuring out the the you know which which one is correct. I think that like proves that like like nobody falls in line like you do on the right. Like on the right, I always talk about the difference between leftist infighting and right wing infighting, which is right wing infighting, somebody ends up uh dead or with their career dead. And I always give the, yeah. the best example of this is Milo Yiannopoulos. There was a point in time mm -hmm. where Milo Yiannopoulos was fucking everywhere. He was on every stupid fucking university campus. He was on everybody's TV shows all over YouTube. The dude was everywhere. And then the right canceled him over a statement that he made on a right on a not a right wing but on a uh, like a like a centristy podcast um which to be honest I think he does definitely deserved to be jumped on for it was his weird pedophilia comments but it was the right wing yeah. that tore him apart and they destroyed him they just were like mm -hmm. look another another fucking gay guy who's a pedophile get him and they just and he's gone He's obliterated. Yeah. This man is... Com and th and that's one of the reasons you don't want to be a pick-me on the right wing because they'll tear you apart the second... Yeah. I mean, I feel like he, he deserved to be torn apart. Oh, but totally. he was also... Yeah. But as just an educational way of the way these spaces work, like uh, uh, the levels of... I mean, his... It wasn't exactly like... Uh, I mean, his opinions, he's been saying heinous shit for a long time. And that's not even the mm -hmm. first time for people who, who knew his the history of Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, it's not even the first time he's even said that argument. But they saw an opportunity where it was inconvenient for them and they burned him. Another great example is that um, that that trans lady on Twitter who got really big by doing the video where she was like, I don't think non-binary people are real. And like Kelly Cat again. Kelly, yeah, yeah I made a video about her. She yeah. appeared and was obliterated in a moment. The moment that she turned, she served her purpose. The right has torn her to shreds, and now all she gets is just bombarded by transphobia constantly. Like the moment the she said, "Like no, I actually do want to use the correct bathroom." They're like, "All right, you're dead. You're done." <laughs> Yeah, the infighting is yeah. so much more severe. Like, there's so many right-wing figures who just disappeared and will never come back. It's so much more brutal. And that's because, like, with a few exceptions, there are, like, a handful of, like, uh, of like significant rifts where, like, there's enough of a niche, uh, like, enough of a separation um, that it can't be completely obliterated. Like, uh, I mean, the 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 MAGA versus, like, uh, 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 versus, like, the, the neocon type. Whatever. Yeah, like that oh, yeah. that rift is just big enough that like even though Ron DeSantis is like getting totally whipped in the polls and like he's at like le like he's tied with Vivek Ron, Ron Swamy at this point just getting obliterated by 
uh, Trump, there's enough of a rift there that they can sustain for a while. But anything else within the MAGA movement, tell me anybody who who, who actually steps out of line with what Donald Trump says, who doesn't immediately he doesn't get, get fired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's that they yeah, fall in think... line so hard. Yeah. I think that is a good point to make. I feel like in leftist spaces, we can get hyper-focused on talking about leftist infighting. And sometimes we, I've, I've seen people be like, why is the left so divided? We need to be more united like the right is. But I, I don't think that's really the case. I think it comes and goes in waves. I think there are waves where the left is much more united. Like, I think the left is pretty, like, unanimously united with, like, supporting the writer strike and supporting, like, yeah. SAG. And it's been yeah. cool seeing, like, everyone come together. And, yeah, like, I don't think I've there seen isn't really much... Yeah, there hasn't been anyone being like, uh, I don't even know what the take is that you could give to like discredit that. But yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it is good to remember that, no, people on the right do have just as much infighting. And yes, like they're the ones who are usually willing to like, you know, kill people if they step out of line. Yeah, so. I mean, the religious conflicts. So let's not even get started on that. You want to go historical. We could talk oh, about yeah. right, inter right wing literal purges. But uh, oh yeah, I mean, I I tend to think that like on the left, respecting those differences is totally fine, um, but we should be careful that we don't uh uh, uh like totally obliterate people uh uh you know over over differences that could that could be solved. Let's keep it for the important stuff. If you find a a, a predator in your spaces, uh you know. Sure. You should blow, take the, them blow the shit yeah. out of them. If you find somebody mm -hmm. who's like uh, advocating for uh, eugenics and they're trying to call themselves a, le a leftist or whatever, fucking roast the shit out of them. But keep it for serious mm -hmm. stuff. Like the 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 differences are are healthy. They're they're healthy to a certain degree. And uh, man, God so, but, knows, I get but, fucking pissed off at like at you know. I mean, I get really pissed off at at like uh, uh, you know. Uh, more authoritarian leaning types. I mean, fuck. I mean, one of the people I listen to most frequently is like so much more Leninist than I am comfortable with. And I listen to their show all the time and I get pissed off about it all the time. But I don't think that they're like, uh, I don't think that they're like an evil person. Uh, yeah. Even though I do think- I'll sometimes like watch, I'll, I'll watch more like uh, centrist content sometimes more than left leaning content just because it's more it can be more like intellectually stimulating to try to like figure out what their takes are so you can kind of think through like why they're wrong on things yeah, where they're you know? coming from things yeah yeah but what what do you think about like i think the rebuttal to to kind of some of this is that it can be easy for us as white people to sit here and be like we need to focus on the big things but the big things really aren't like making like racist jokes or stuff like that and then that can make uh s some black people or other you know it can make them feel like that we're we can be downplaying the harm of like what is like the real big problems there you know oh i mean i, I don't i don't really have like a a a, a rebuttal to like um well okay i guess the what i would say is if you got evidence of a racist joke let's see it if you got mm -hmm. evidence of a transphobic joke let's see it like uh i have uh, no hesitation being able to call out people being transphobic uh um in fact i mean some people think that i like go around calling everybody transphobic when actually most of my critiques have been very pointed uh, my one of my most famous conflicts, I was explicitly not calling the person transphobic and instead saying, I think that this specific tactic, this specific approach that you did is a transphobic action, but I think it can be fixed. Yeah. I think you can just choose not yeah, to do see, that. And, like, and I think that is, I think that that's is the approach. Like if, that, if somebody- I agree with that. Yeah. When I'm criticizing someone, I like to focus in on like, this was an action that can cause harm and it's a transphobic action, but I'm not gonna label you a transphobe unless I've seen like a pattern of actions that reinforces that you have some negative bias against trans people. Like I feel like saying you did a transphobic thing and you are a transphobe are two like completely, the, the weight of those two accusations are very different, but people on Twitter will be like, Th they'll equate these two things you did a transphobic thing therefore you are a transphobe therefore you should kill yourself and that's like the you know i mean yeah. i i i to like i i think that like no we shouldn't turn a blind eye to bad behavior at all um and i'm not i've never i don't think that anything that i've said here has been asking people to turn a blind eye to bad behavior but rather evidence the bad behavior 
if the bad behavior is as bad as, as it's being said, then let it stand on its own. Let's see it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the thing. Let's evidence it and let's address it for what it is instead of like, uh, 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 you know, like a matryoshka doll of like, well, uh, it's that it's that uh, that whole like euphemization thing that happens where it's like, okay, well, here's a thing that somebody said was problematic, and that means that uh, you know there, like like you said, like it, the, there is a tr uh, 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 an, uh, the reverse of it that happens where like uh, people will say, oh well, this person made a joke, and somebody else that I know said it was problematic, and that means well they're a transphobe or they're a racist or whatever, and there's a there's a Mm -hmm. there's a step that's jumped uh and i think it's jumped usually for convenience of the catchiness of 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 levying accusations i mean and i also think something that i don't deal well like my brain doesn't deal well with uh interpreting hyperbole yeah um sometimes when someone's being hyperbolic uh my brain doesn't like compute that it's like yeah. i just take them at face value of like what they're saying and they're like no i was obviously being hyperbolic and it's like okay but i feel like hyperbole is something that you need to wield very carefully because i agree it's it can be very difficult to tell when someone is being hyperbolic or not you know? yeah it definitely can and i think that like but i i feel like most of the time it like the hi hyperbole is like not 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 the core issue at hand if somebody like if somebody's being if somebody's being racist, it's usually pretty easy to tell that uh, without like, like, like the hyperbole defense is usually not going to work in most cases. There might be edge cases. Um, you know what I mean? Like, whereas I think that like hyperbole is more often used like uh, 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 to defend uh, more abstract things like like uh when you're making a bunch of when you are listing out like 10 different allegations against somebody people will use hyperbole at, in a couple of those to make them seem worse so that by the time you get to the end of the list of allegations now you're convinced this person's the worst person on the planet and whereas yeah. like i mean at least in my experience like it's usually not like i've not seen like the hyperbole defense used like to from somebody who was being accused of of racism or or transphobia um at least in my experience like i don't know there's so many examples of times i mean people people i got accused of being transphobic for a really long period of time because of the most ridiculous mental gymnastics that i could possibly imagine it was because i made a self id based argument and there was a because i made a self id argument they concluded that i must also think that uh I'm trying to, I'm going to try and lay out the logic here, which was, I made an argument that self ID is like a, a solid, uh, is like a solid stance. Like for, for other people, you, if somebody says they're, you know, whatever gender, that's perfectly fine because just like a name, anybody can call it on and there's no real way to police it any other way. And then, uh, they took that to say, well, that means that I don't believe that there's such a thing as like, um, intrinsic gender, which is true. I don't think that, that you are that like gender is a thing that's written into your DNA or anything like that. I think it's something that people come to grapple with. It's a social structure. But then they took that to mm -hmm. mean, well, that means you think that trans people before they come out aren't actually women or men. And therefore, mm -hmm. a conclusion being I'm transphobic because I would say that apparently apparently they believe that I would say that. So that sort of thing. Oh yeah, I mean, like, I've been called transphobic because I think non-binary people exist. Like there are trans medicalists that will say like, oh, well, you you don't actually believe in trans people if you think that you can be non-binary. That's you know? another one that's common. Like I, and, and yeah. I'm just like, how do you grapple with that? Like, that's just a, a level of, it's this, it's this game of telephone. It's this weird stretch tied to a stretch tied to a stretch to justify a hyperbolic statement about somebody and i feel like that's a lot of the allegations that we like a lot of the allegations that we hear about people is they said something that can be interpreted in a certain way and if you interpret it in that way then it could be bad and then when you actually get down to it and you look at it and you go is that really what was said and, and, and it's funny because it means that like other things, like when people actually do say really ridiculous shit, like, I mean, 
uh, an off the cuff example is like Zizek's Zizek Slavoj Zizek like recently like signing off on a whole bunch of of gender critical talking points and writing a piece about it that barely even sounded yeah. like he written it. It sounded like it was ghost written. Uh, was is like yeah. a perfect. It didn't example. sound like a leftist talking whatsoever. It didn't, and I was like, this is a perfect example of when you could say, hey, this is pretty fucked up, and nobody talks about mm. it because everybody's you know uh, too busy talking about. Uh, uh, you know, th this joke, if you shine the light on it in the right way, then it, it's problematic in this way. And I, I, I'm yeah. not ever going to tell anybody that they should like, that we should look the other way at genuine statements of racism or transphobia, just that we need to like evidence that shit and make a, make a solid claim, uh, uh, instead of and just we should like, and we should triage and analyze uh levels of harm you know yeah. don't act like everything just because something is harmful that means it's everything is equally harmful um because that's not logical either and i am um, i i've uh i definitely have experienced the thing where you get labeled a uh you know a bigoted person because of you know you say the wrong thing like i uh there are a lot of fat activists, for example, that think I'm violently fat phobic because I've gotten into arguments where I've said that, like, no, it actually does put you at higher risk of COVID death if you're, like, uh, overweight or, like, yeah. saying that, like, there are health risks associated with excess fat. Like, I think we should treat fat people better. And, like, I totally am against fat phobia. I totally am, like, on your side. But, like, I think that some of the things you're saying are, like, you're going against like the scientific evidence here and then they'll say that I'm fat phobic because of that. Yeah. So. I think that that's like, that goes, um, you know, I think that that kind of stuff, it just means that nobody can actually have a conversation and real information can't be reached. And, and again, this is not to say that like people don't have a reason to be, um, to like be worried about it. But like at the end of the day, like, you still the truth still matters at the end of the day the truth of the statement still mm -hmm. matters it is true that there are a lot of like example transphobic people out there i think there are a lot of trans hating people out there in the world um and that trans people have a very good reason for being on edge about statements and have a very good reason mm -hmm. for being suspect about certain statements but that just doesn't mean you, you still that doesn't mean you can just skip the the process of actually hammering these things down uh, because otherwise it just gets weaponized and it mostly gets weaponized against trans people and it mostly gets weaponized or, or in your case, it's like, like, uh, the fat phobia thing, like it, it, it it's going to be like, who are the people who are going to get talking about it? It's going to be fat people who are talking about it and, t and sharing their opinions about it. This happens with, uh, I mean, fuck a, a great example of this is the racism thing. Uh, an, a racist thing is, is, Look at how the racism was thrown against Shark and for how long and for how hard. It's not like, at the end of the day, it's not like the right targets are being hit here. It's like the the fact of like like having the evidence bar too low and having the hyperbole bar too high ends up hurting marginalized people the most because they're going to be the mm -hmm. ones that end up getting it weaponized against them. Um, because they're the easy, because we're the easiest targets. We're the ones that people, we all acknowledge the prejudice exists. So obviously the prejudice is going to roll against us. It benefits everyone yeah. to take a step back and to just take the time to, to just, but actually make sure that what's being said about people is in line with what was actually done. I don't think that like, yeah. it should be this. But I, I also, and I totally agree with what you're saying, but I also want to reiterate, I want the people on the other side to take this advice as well if someone makes an overblown claim about something don't like um, automatically like label that person an abuser or something yeah. or say like this person has engaged in a harassment campaign like oh yeah not everything is not everything is a fucking harassment campaign i feel like that's everyone true. is always saying this is a harassment campaign that's a harassment it's like no a lot of this is just people like uh you know very firmly giving their takes on things like harassment campaigns to me more feels like okay you're like dming them or you're doxing them or you're yeah. harassing their family or reaching out to their work or something like that's what i see as a harassment campaign like people yeah. giving their takes on twitter isn't a harassment campaign you know i mean i think that i think that sometimes these things do devolve into uh into harassment i mean harassment campaigns usually to me sustain is is something a little more sustained um, but I, I, yeah, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, there are definitely some people, uh, in recent dramas that 
I would say, have engaged in harassment campaigns, but it's not, uh, most of the people aren't, aren't creators. They're, they are uh, ob- obsessive, like, uh, uh, personalities, yeah. Twitter users who have who have an insanely obsessive approaches, where they they pick a target and that becomes their life, and they're getting everyone on board as much as possible. And I would consider that to be a certain level of harassment campaign. And I mean, I do think they happen, yeah. but I, I agree like with you. I, that, like there is a there is a hyperbole. People can the, overstate the harm of harassment campaigns. Yeah, but, yeah. absolutely. I, people can overstate like the harm of getting critique. Uh, of being yeah. like, hey, someone is critiquing you, and like, I think it's but also like, like possible to just be like, I think this person's claims are bullshit, uh, and that's the end of it. Um, yeah, but, but I like, I, I one time tweeted, I, I tweeted out like, what do you think that Vosh could do better in this situation? And I got like twenty responses saying he could kill himself. I'm like, yeah, it's insane. What insane the fuck? shit? Yeah. How the who who are you think? How are you thinking this is gonna help anyone in any way? I. I don't know. I just I've always been very like that shit is like to me is like there's like a background and this is another issue entirely. uh, I guess it plugs in, but it's a separate thing, which is just like the background toxicity of a lot of these spaces is so deranged, like that Mm -hmm. it becomes hard to even disentangle it from the rest, like that, like where it's it's so common uh, to have a ton of people just act like that towards anyone. Um, where it's like, like, I mean, I've heard Vosh say, like, he feels like a lot of times, like the left, uh, people on the left are familiar with him. And as a result, like they treat him worse than they would treat, uh, an, an actual Nazi. And I think there's some truth to that sometimes where it's like people's familiarity with people that they perceive. You don't as feel as. Space. Yeah. you don't feel as like scared, scared to stand up against them. I think I feel that sometimes that I'm like. Yeah. Like, I don't even want to fucking talk about, like, Nick Fuentes, because if I fucking talk about him, like, I do not want to deal with the Groiper army coming down my throat, you know? Yeah. Which, I mean... And that... that ca- yeah, there's that, and then there's also just, like, it's just, like, people spend their time, you know, in lefty Twitter spaces, so they'll hear about a particular figure, and that makes them super angry to the degree where they're willing to say something like, oh, X person should kill themselves. Which is just like, man, uh, you've lost touch. You lost touch with reality. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I I think I don't know. I think there should be like a some standards of conduct. And like I said, I do think a standard of conduct should be like don't encourage your followers to make fake accounts or like try to infiltrate spaces. I think. That's not a good thing to do. Don't ever send death threats. Don't ever tell people to kill themselves. Don't ever dox yeah. people. Don't ever reach out to someone's fucking family because you're mad at like a take that they had. Like I feel like these are for in order for these online spaces to not just evolve into like everyone being terrified at all times. We have to yeah. have like a certain level of conduct, you know? Yeah. And there's no one really to enforce it. So we just kind of have to encourage it and and demonstrate yeah. its value. And I do think that, like, I do think that conversations like this can demonstrate that, can help people realize that, like, you know, uh, uh, this type of behavior doesn't make the space good for anyone. It's actually not to anyone's benefit. It's arguably not even to the benefit of the people who are engaging in it because they seem pretty fucking miserable themselves. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I do think that, like, I I think there's value in that and, like, telling people, can you guys fucking cool it with the, like, you should kill yourself jokes and and the the deranged DMs and the, like, doxing threats and the the these allegations just get out of control. And yeah, but yeah, but again, it is a hard it is a hard thing to do because a lot of people are convinced that uh, that you know, what their allegations are totally al- accurate. And I just can't help but say, okay, well, if that's true, let's see your evidence and then we'll deal with it from there. You know, which is like mm-hmm. what I what I felt like I did and people were free to disagree, but that's what I felt like I did with the foreign man video where I listened to this video and I said, I don't think what, you, what you've claimed here lines up with what you've presented as evidence. And I don't, and I think that you made a lot of claims that weren't backed up with the evidence that you showed. And I think that's shit and you should do a better job. I left it at that. I don't have any like long term hate for for you know foreign man. I thought the video sucked, and I'll say the video sucked, and I thought it was hurtful in a lot of ways. 
um, to individuals. I think it was hurt. It's hurtful to say that kind of stuff uh, off the cuff. I think it was especially hurtful to like Shark, who totally got caught in the blast with really off the cuff, very very beginning of the video, really harsh. A joke made it like made, a raccoon noise or something. Yeah, yeah, and then showing his showing a face that was you know showing a picture of him, a contextless contextless picture of him at a birthday party when he was at TwitchCon. Like that's like fucking weird behavior, insane behavior. And I think I could, I'm fine with calling that what it is, but I also don't think that, that like uh, it should be the end that of video Florida man's career or whatever. That video just it felt like it had some strange cognitive dissonance going on because it was like throughout the video there were like a lot of valid points being made about how like marginalized people need to make sure not to like weaponize their marginalized identities um but then the accusations weren't necessarily even instances of people weaponizing their marginalized identities you know because yeah. that's a that's a fair that's a fair thing to talk about is like you shouldn't just fall back on like no i'm trans you can't call me racist like that's obviously something that is worth criticizing but uh you need to if you're gonna accuse people of doing that then you need like solid evidence to back that up you know yeah well well we've been at this for a while uh and it's been a really mm. really good conversation and i feel like we've touched on a lot of different topics and uh was there anything else that was on your mind that you wanted to talk about i'm not saying we got to wrap up right now i just want to you know uh give us an opportunity to, to change topics if you feel like it or or if we are, we're ready to wrap I'm, I'm also cool with that how are you feeling um i just wanted to yeah maybe end it by sort of talking about like i feel like you and me i i saw your conversation with soul bunny and i saw your conversation with shark and i felt like i was really agreeing with everything that you were saying and i feel like like we obviously like you said we disagree on like the kevels thing we probably maybe disagree on like the basics of uh, or, or like the minutia of certain little drama things here and there but I'm overall sure. i feel like we were on the same page with things but then like before i joined the call i saw people in your chat being like don't uh, ryan is a liar he's gonna be disingenuous he's gonna be he he did this thing and that thing and, and you need to not fall for his weaselly tricks and <laughs> it's like I'm yeah, like, what I, do I do? How do I? Well, I well, I'm, here's I'm, one thing. I swear, I'm trying to be genuine. I'm trying my best to be here's genuine. Here's one thing that you can do. You can look at the chat and you can go like this. And the reason why I always do that, I mean, I, 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 I will tell my chat, please shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, this is for you, chat. These, these two are, are driven right at you. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, there's 450 people or so maybe more i don't know exactly youtube's kind of weird about it about 450 people mm -hmm. watching on my end right now there's definitely going to be some of those people who uh have already made up their mind about the things that you've said they are pro they might be a fan of another content creator that you maybe had beef with at some point those people are mm -hmm. going to exist now if they get out of yeah. hand and they start saying fucking toxic shit i'll ban I, you know i ban them out but you know yeah, I'm not like, I'm not asking you to like turn yeah. on your chat or anything. It's just like it's one of those things where I'm like, I mean, god, uh I I I most of the chat, most of the time I show my face in somebody else's community, there's a lot of toxicity there for me as well. So, yeah. I don't know. People I need to I need to gain like the mental yeah. yeah. I, I need to like learn to I don't know what the fuck. Maybe I need to go to therapy or something to learn the strategies of how to gain the mental fortitude to not let every single person's opinion get to me. But I feel like that's, I don't know. I, I don't know if the human brain is like designed to deal with having hundreds of people being critical of you all at the same time, you know? Oh, uh, no, it totally isn't. Like, I mean, I've, uh, I don't handle it all that well either. Like I've developed some coping strategies and some, some, uh, tactics, uh, to 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 like minimize it, but I, I, people get through my armor all the time. I'll get a comment where somebody says something so fucking stupid and annoying. I mean, God. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people go way across the line, and it's like where I feel like I need to take action. You know, people are ta saying things that are like against the rules of the community. But I mean, even not just that. Like, it's not technically against the rules of my community to call me a white cuck, uh, bending over, you know, to <laughs> for, to the opinions of black people or whatever not technically uh -huh. against the rules of my opinion of my community to be critical because i mean i don't know there might be somebody like that out there and it's not really whatever like that's kind of offensive and whatever but it's not technically out of the rules but when somebody said that to me the other night it fucking pissed me off so much i blasted them perma banned from my community just shut the fuck up 
And and yeah. I reserve the right to blast people on that kind of stuff because sometimes people just do. Sometimes people say things that are so off the cuff and designed to like piss you off. They're so out of reality and so against what's actually happening. Like, so I don't blame you for that at all. And like, I'm certainly, like I said, that's a perfect example of somebody who definitely got through my, my general armor. Like mm -hmm. I was just like, Ooh, you got me mad. I yep, think you got me. Fuck you asshole. So I got my revenge. But, I uh, I think it, especially when you know inside of like your heart that yeah. the reason you're having that conversation with Soul Bunny is to try to like, um, you know, maybe come to some sort of understanding or build a little bit of a bridge or like s have Soul Bunny see where you're coming from. And then yeah. the response is you're a cuck. It's like, that's obviously going to piss you off because that's the opposite of what your intention is there, you know? Yeah. And like, I don't know, like some people in chat are like, I imagine some people co came from, you know, probably your your spat with Vosh, um, mm -hmm. the things that happened there, which I don't even remember all the details of. But I imagine, I mean, there are definitely some Vosh fans in my in my audience. I have overlap with a couple of communities, and Vosh is one of them. Um, I definitely and, didn't handle so my interaction with. I definitely didn't handle my interaction with Vosh in the perfect way. I will admit to that. Vosh made a video calling me out, and I was like. You know, I'm just going to D I, like the I left it off with just like privately DMing him. We we had another private conversation, but I was like it, clearly me like talking about our private conversation publicly did not go well. So yeah. I'm like rather than like make a video responding to what he's saying and keeping the cycle going, I'm like I'm just going to DM him privately and like uh, you know, sort that out. If he feels like I misrepresented what he was saying in the DMs to me, you know, I apologize for that. I wasn't trying to do that. But if you felt mi misrepresented, you felt misrepresented. And there's not really anything uh, I can do about that. So, you know, that's where I am on the Vosh thing. But yeah, my, my mean, goal was never... All, all I was trying goal... to say is that, like, there's definitely going to... There's probably going to be some people here who probably, uh, you know, walked away from that and said, oh, well, you know, you know, Ryan, Ryan Ryan's manipulative or whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah. like, you know what, like... Uh, you're, that's nice. You have your opinion. Uh, it's not relevant mm -hmm. to the conversation that's being had here. I feel like this conversation has been very good. And if they want to still think that, I'm sure they'll continue and whatever. There's a million gajillion yep. people on the internet. And guess what, everybody? Hey, chat, opinions are like fucking assholes. Everyone has one. And most of the time, you don't want to see them. So there you go. Yep. Maybe I'll maybe I'll convince those people who think I'm a snake that I'm a garter snake instead of a cobra or something. Yeah, you know, something a little like bit, you know, a little happens. bit less harmful I mean, of a snake. There are so many people who hated my guts a year ago and now have come to be you know come to be regular watchers. I know of people who fucking hated my guts and then ended up just being fine. It happens sometimes. Yeah. There's so many and people it's... on the internet. You can't always. I mean, that's kind of the thing, right? Like, but like. <laughs> that's kind of the thing there's 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 the accountability process online is almost impossible to do especially given the the fact that it'll be you know one person who's got the camera and another person who's got the camera talking and it broadcasting out to who knows how many people will end up seeing all this conversation in the end and inevitably and some of because... them are going to have a, strong opinions about everything that was said and they're, you know, they're fans of whichever person. And, you know, I don't even, you know, parasocial relationships are cringe, but they, you know, they develop. And I can't even like fault someone for having a bit of a parasocial relationship because we're living in a capitalist hellscape. And sometimes the only, uh, you know, uh, respite you have from that is building a bit of a parasocial relationship with your favorite streamer or whatever you well know, yeah so. i mean and, and the parasocial relationships are, are are incentivized at every single level by every platform that we're on um and yep. in, including you want, you want them to get to that point where they're going to give you money that's like yeah. the funnel that is being and the only way oh, to get and, people and to give so you money is to have some that, parasocial because, like, relationship i mean think of just i mean i'm at, i mean i know you know this like think of this stuff that youtube asks you to do on the back end how many different times they're like do this to connect with your fans more have you considered <laughs> yeah. responding to uh to every comment that you've ever received on every video ever <laughs> have you considered like writing or doing a oh god youtube recommends like oh every time you get a super chat uh you know consider filming a short video in response to them like are you crazy are you what <laughs> 
You want me to like record? You want me to record a custom video for every super chat? Fucking what? I feel like it's like hard for me to keep up with all with just like thanking every dono and reading every dono message. A lot of content yeah. creators can't keep up with that without ruining their content. Like if you read mm. every single comment in in real time, which is very good for getting donos. If you read out every comment you receive. People will love to donate that. But it also means you're spending hours of your stream reading out comments from other people instead of whatever the fuck you logged on to talk about in the first place. It's, uh, yeah, mm. these platforms really encourage the, 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 the bejesus out of fucking uh, parasocial stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't, oh, yeah. I don't wholly blame people. Although, you know, when you cross a line, still got to put them in their place. Yeah. Yeah, but I think um, I think moving forward, my strat I'm gonna have more of a strategy of like like you're saying, if this thing that's happening doesn't involve me and I don't have some like really, you know, constructive thing to add, just like stay out of it because it really has just led to nothing but pain and misery in my life. <laughs> it does and it, so often. It's very, it, it's very weird when people say that like they think I'm trying to like grift off of it or something because all that it's led to is me like losing followers and I don't like the place I make money is by making like, you know, comedy commentary videos like I don't make any yeah. money off of weighing in on leftist infighting. So yeah, again, uh, chatters are uh, uh, among the stupidest people on the planet and also among the smartest people on the planet see because the chat is a huge... <laughs> when they give when when they give money they're the smartest people on the planet <laughs> yeah exactly you are supposed you become you become personally you are my einstein the moment you donate money to my channel uh but no i mean like they're just a mo they're just a crowd you know and every little individual chatter has their own approach and thing but as a as a cluster man what a mess right I mean, that's the thing. You're going to get people who are going to call you a grifter for anything you do. You could breathe. and I mean, You could take a break off of stream and somebody will call you a grifter because, uh, oh, you're not making new content. You're expecting people to watch your old content. What a grifter. And it's just like, how insane can yeah. you be? But again, <laughs> uh, every, there's a, you, it, on the internet, you can find every opinion imaginable. The most deranged opinion. I mean, uh, the extremes being, you know, the... Uh, I mean, we watch some crazy conspiracy content on here every once in a while, and uh, some of those opinions get pretty wild. Some pretty interesting oh, yeah. views on the world about what may or may not have transpired in the past, you know, mud floods and poop lanterns and uh, UFOs building the pyramids and all that kind of stuff. Um, yep. Yes, Naomi yep. Chance, you personally are incredibly intelligent. Thank you for the super chat. I think, um, yeah, and I think people... Uh, can feel like oh we're in a good like uh, critical space where we make sure that we like base things off of evidence so then that means that i'm not you know open to being like manipulated by things anymore but that's definitely like not the case like everyone can be subject to being manipulated you know oh yeah e even even the most uh even the most guarded uh sometimes succumb to their own biases uh so yeah. keep that in mind and everybody chill out just a little bit for god's sake you know you know you're gonna get better stuff out of it if you guys chill and yeah. stop being so thirsty for blood you're gonna end up getting stuff you like more okay seriously and That's everyone in the upset. chat i love every single one of you even when you're absolute fucking morons uh, so. <laughs> that's the way to do it that's awesome <laughs> yeah. well uh it has been an absolute pleasure is there any other topics you want to touch on i don't want to wrap us up too short but uh but, no, no, I think I think uh, I really appreciated the conversation. Thank you yeah, for what likewise. you're doing with trying to like uh, defuse a bit of the tension. I feel like that's what we need right now. So. Yeah, I mean, I just want to see I want to I want to I want to have if I can have a cool conversation with someone and it can go like this, like I want to have that like this was awesome. This was a great conversation. I feel like we talked about a ton of stuff. We talked about some stuff that's miserable, but the conversation itself wasn't miserable. And I feel mm -hmm. like people are going to walk away from this hearing both of our perspectives on uh, stuff that they've probably witnessed and seen. And I think it makes people think about it differently. I think that's awesome and really good. And again, I, I, so. I, I just really appreciated this conversation. Please, uh, before, before we wrap up, shout out your channel one more time so that my lovely imps can go check out your stuff and see your, your, the heart of your content, the stuff that you do that has nothing to do with this type of stuff the the actual quality stuff no uh yeah ryan beard go check it out uh make sure if anyone who's here from my audience subscribe to demon mama she's doing really great stuff so. thank you i appreciate that
Really appreciate that. Well, thank you so much. It was wonderful, and uh, hopefully we will speak again in the future. I would look forward to that. Yeah, sounds good. All right, wonderful talk night. to you soon. Bye. I thought that was a great conversation.